This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Hello Fresh. Why, hello Fresh. Hello, how you doing? Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. It's amazing because I'm oh, talking about the, the thing. Planet, the Wonders of technology. The Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. Immediately before pressing record, you said, imagine if I was one of those people who had a fake baby. And then you hit record <laughs> before I could engage you on that, on that, on that wild sentiment you, you It's a thing people do. They get, you know, they, you know, adults get them and then, like, dress them up. And because it's, it's like, Halloween. And Halloween. I said... <laughs> Uh, what did you, I dress- you, your son has a costume. Yeah, and I yeah. said, did you, did, "Did you dress your baby up?" Yeah, and you were like, "No, no, because it's a baby. It's a baby." And no, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not against dressing uh-huh. up babies. But you know, when you see like a photo shoot and there's one like stuffed in a pumpkin or whatever, and it's just like, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> you see that, right? <laughs> I guess. Oh, they're like, about, like an fr- Ann Getty's calendar. Yeah, whatever. They're in like okay. a fruit basket. Of- Don't say stuff a baby in a pumpkin though. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. I guess it That's is. That's what it's they're doing. Probably it is. It's probably true. Sorry, no, sorry, I'm not sugarcoating it, Mason. <laughs> it's all right. So I'm keeping it real. Yeah, no, you very much are. Uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Maybe Halloween. we covered it last week, but yes. we're back. Uh, something that I forgot about during Halloween now. is done, by the way. For oh, by the time this is coming out, yeah. The the one thing I forgot because we're recording Halloween night. Yes, that's right. Uh, so this this might be the spookiest podcast yet. I mean, um, I'm just talking about t- t- tax time. Sorry, go. I had to get one, one more in. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go uh, on. <laughs> sure, it's, a, it's the only tradition we have. Um, the one thing that I forgot, and as, as I was coming to your house, I, I noticed it a few times, the, 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 the most important part of Halloween, mm. which is – Groups of teenagers who haven't dressed up but they have threatening auras. <laughs> yeah, you know, know, just the threatening group of yeah. teens just wandering around all yep, surly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's even spooky because they're wearing like pandemic masks. That's you know true. I mean? Yeah, the perfect excuse now. Yeah. A lot of them have knives. But yeah. Are they real knives? Sometimes they knock on your door and they're yeah. just like trick or treat and you go. Trick. <laughs> yeah, you're not wearing any costumes. But what will you do if I don't give you something? And you'll always know where I live. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And you can't have that, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah. yeah. But hey, there, it's that in between period. I remember when you're a teen and you don't have a car, you yeah, can't yeah. go to a pub and drink. And so if it's you, like, what yeah, do you that's do? True. And if you if you were like, well, you know, if we're getting free candy, I should probably make some effort. But yeah. then you know your friends will make fun of you if you that's make right, any exactly, effort at all. Yeah. So we understand, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. But get off my property. Yeah, get off Mason's I'll, property. I got a blunderbuss. Don't we got even... we got nobody to the door this mm. year because uh, I know some streets in my neighbourhood are doing it, but. Um, yeah, because of the thing with pandemic yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, going yeah. on at the yeah. moment. <laughs> the thing, you know, you probably read about it in yeah. your mm-hmm. local newspapers. Uh, look, uh, big topics this week. We're going to be topics. talking Mandalorian. We're going to talk about Star Wars characters, weird Star Wars characters Great. off the back of that. Too. That's good because we get some weird Star Wars characters showing up in bloody Mandalorian. Uh, you can jump to that if you want because there are time codes. We're also going to talk about Suicide Squad, new Assassin's Creed Ooh. stuff, mm. uh, some Zack Snyder news in terms of like why the Snyder Cut is going ahead, Spider-Man 3, <laughs> Into the Spider-Verse and video game delays, yep. mm-hmm. uh, Creed 3, um, a bunch of other so Halloween kids trailers, one of which we're particularly we're going to talk about, which we'll get to, uh, Moon Knight news. And uh, some other bits and pieces and, and bits and bobs, you know what I mean? I understand, time, sure. Time codes mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. So here we go, Mason. Let's start with Suicide Squad. James Gunn was questioned this week. He's always doing a, a Twittered Q&A. And maybe that is this very is from much that. very true, yes. But they say, James Gunn, uh, what, what, what's <laughs> Mr. Gone? James Gunn. Mr. James Gunn, sir. Lord of celluloid, Mr. James <laughs> yes. Gunn. Uh, they asked him about, like, what the agreement was for killing people on su- the Suicide Squad. And he said, that was the uh, one of the things we agreed on before I came to work for them. And then they said, but what about the characters in the movie? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, and he said, I wasn't looking for shock value, but I wanted audiences to know that anything could happen. So anybody can go. They said even like he could have killed Harley Quinn. Mm. He could have killed anybody. And he talks also about how like, He's not a fan of killing people and bringing them back. So for like Michael Rooker, for example, who dies in Guardians 2, yeah, huh. he said he'd bring him back in like a flashback, but he wouldn't bring yeah, him back. Yeah, right, back. right, right, right. That wouldn't stop like somebody else from Literally any back. other <laughs> yeah. director. I mean, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure they went, I'm, sh- I'm sure DC went, okay, uh, well, well, we'll say he can do whatever he wants and we won't bring up bring any characters back when he's still at the helm. But realistically, all these directors do maybe three at the most. And then yeah. we just bring Harley Quinn back. Exactly. You know? So the, also, the bullet missed every vital organ in her brain. Yeah. 
It went between the, the folds. Between the lobes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it went through that trench. Yeah, exactly. The trenchy bit. No, but then you're severing the cors- corpus callosum, which is like the fibres oh. uh, that, that help your two sides of the brain communicate with each other. That being said, you can survive with that. But there's information that cannot be passed. So like... One side of your brain. Oh, this might be wrong. This is what I learned in psychology <laughs> at school. I think I learned it from a TV movie. But cool, continue. excellent. But if yeah. you sever it, so one side of your brain is uh, is for is for words and stuff, mm-hmm. and the other one is for pictures, turds and stuff, turds and stuff. Yeah, Going like to the, the show words of pitch, words and pictures mm. is from a show in the in the eighties that uh, that they it was like children's it was British. Doesn't matter. Anyway, did you suddenly get your corpus callosum reattached, <laughs> and all of a sudden this is all spurting out? But the point is, if you cover one eye, whichever yes. side of the brain is uh, is is visual, mm. you can look at a thing. Yes. And you know what it is, but you can't, can't say, say it. what it is, yeah. Because you because the eye that, that goes to the other side of your brain does the words. I'm yes. not explaining this well. <laughs> no, that's so that's you perfect. need both of them to kind of uh, yeah, for that yeah, to yeah, work. Yeah. So mm. I think that's fascinating. Anyway, they also said uh he also said that he could have directed anything, including Superman. So they'll said look, anything and people were like, Oh, that's bad grammar. If you yeah, yes, that's all right. If you if you were were uh, were a director, you're a hot shot director, Go on. like James Gunn. You're yes. not, just to clarify. Uh, I wouldn't do Superman because it'd be like it's nothing but trouble. Nothing right. but trouble. Yeah. you're not going to get it right. You won't get even close, and people will be like, <laughs> another one on the pile of the corpse that is the Superman cinematic history. Exactly. Well, well, well. Mm. So yeah, you're right. It's like doing a Star Wars. Movie. But if anybody could, he could, I guess. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah. But I, I but st- still statistically think he probably won't be able to do it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you're not going to please everybody is what I'm saying. Well, see, and that's yeah. the thing. Like, I, I am at, if, if they go, okay, well, I'll just make it a grounded one and it's old school Superman. He can only leap tall buildings. People would be like, well, boo, that sucks. And if he. And they're like, but it's a trilogy in the second. No. No. We don't, <laughs> we right. don't care. No. Yeah. Mm. So I, don't, I think he probably could make a very good Superman movie. But um, mm. he's not. He's no. Doing, he's doing this. What do you Which think it, he'll do after this? Uh, Guardians 3. But after, after that. I think he'll come back to DC and oh, something else. Yeah. But after that. After that. Do you think he's a – I guess a lot of people now are like their, their career, like Disney people or career Warner Brothers people where it's mm. like, well, I did I did one and it did well, so now I'm just going to do that until it's time oh, to retire. I don't know, because then you get like Taika Waititi and he does his weird little ones in between. Oh, that's They're true. Like Hitler's <laughs> his imaginary friend. So yeah. I think James Gunn would probably do – Do another weird horror movie? Something like, I've, I've kind of waited for Peter Jackson to kind of make another weird what horror movie What if he did a Superman movie? And then he did another Brightburn movie because he produced it or whatever. Yeah, right. That's a parody of the Superman movie that oh he my. did. He's a parody of his own movie. Yes. Oh, has that ever been done? Okay, here's some – because for this uh, holiday season, we considered doing maybe a Blubberella commentary. Yes. But – We don't want to. No, we don't want to. <laughs> but apparently that is a scene-by-scene scene remake of one of his – of like um, Blood Rain, one of his Blood Rain oh. movies. It's the same movie except with a different main character. Funny. Right? Funny that's stuff. Funny stuff. <laughs> he's man, he's, really he's a real auteur. He just does whatever he wants, assuming the He'll German government will, wants, yeah. will do it for free. Exactly. There's something wrong with that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think you want to get too self-referential on your own movies. I think yeah. it beca- mm. it's like by the time they get to Scream 3 and they're like, can you believe all the screams that have happened? This is The third one's not as good. And it's like, boo, boo. <laughs> this movie we're currently in and you're currently watching, view is not as good. You've been suckered. <laughs> Don't. That's a, I mean, that's a bold gambit, though. Oh, yeah. I can't remember any off the top of my head, but I'm sure X-Men there are. X-Men Apocalypse? Does that literally say? Yeah, they come out of. Oh, they I want come to say out of Return of the theater. Jedi, or it's probably, or it might be Back to the Future 3. You're right. I can't and they're like, sequels are always worse. They're like, yeah, the yeah. third one is the worst. Yeah, right. Because they did. First class, Days of Future Past. Yeah, because it's a bold move because it is self-referential, but it's also like you don't want to. Do you really want to bring the audience's attention to the fact that your movie is not good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a bold strategy. It and really it is. Literally, never pays off. Mm-hmm. And I was going to say, it's also mm. a, a very, um, it's a very bold move for us on the third episode of our podcast. Yeah. To in fact mention that at all, right? No, but this is. This is fine because we're gonna we're gonna nail it. Oh, we're gonna nail this episode. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. bucking the trend because <laughs> we're of a third podcast always <laughs> being best. <laughs> yeah, I love this bit we've committed to probably you, forever. The bit that you've committed to forever <laughs> is what's happening. What's going to happen at five hundred? I mean, I mean, <laughs> assume we'll we get to five hundred. Just ignore it. And just uh, kind of I, I should um, a, a bit of bit of feedback from the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. Some Big people's fan. OCDs are going absolutely wild. <laughs> Some people's are. Uh, 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 but even if we change it back, yes. these three episodes will be labelled as such. They're still labelled, It's yeah. like the time when one of the players from Geelong decided to change his names, le- like, names legally to Whiskers, like the brand the of cat, cat food, food, right? so that then it would go on the official roster for that week. It was like a brand deal. And then the AFL were like, not an hour watch, and they didn't, they didn't put it in. Huh. I can't remember who did it, but... Huh. 
I don't know what that's going to do with anything. No. My Corpus Colossum fact, I feel, was it's pretty good. Was I think better. That was, this one, yeah. not as good. And when you, you know what the third fact is going to be? <laughs> it's going to be, gonna be <laughs> worse. Than, it's going to be the worst one of all. So let's not do any more facts on this episode. Agreed. Let's keep it all speculation. Or in fact, for the remainder of this podcast. Agreed. Netflix up uh, pairing up with Ubisoft. Speaking of, uh, are you going to get that new one where Watch Dogs, but you can control anybody? Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah. It's set in London and you can get any, you can be anybody. Yeah, they've been if, teasing that for a long time, yeah. haven't they? I'm yeah, I mean, they, no. delayed, they delayed Cyberpunk again. They so we maybe. can talk about that as well. They, so what's, let's do that now. Yeah. They delayed Cyberpunk till December 10th. Yeah, yeah. So it's still coming. A couple more weeks. Year, um, because it's coming out on like five platforms at once. Right, okay. That makes sense. And also, I don't know if you saw this, but Into the Spider-Verse, the, the skin of that is going into the Miles Morales I game. I see that, yeah. Month, and they got the frame rate as the same as the um, Oh, so it's going to be animation. kind of janky Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. It's no. great. It looks okay. so good. And he's got that kind of spindliness to him. Oh. And it looks so good. And also they put the little like pal like cool. words when he hits people and stuff nice. like that. It's not just a suit. It's like... They've, it's a way of life. It's a way of life. And apparently they've made it so you can use that frame rate on like the other suits, but no thank you. Ugh. Ugh. Gross and no thank you. Yeah, so no, I'm not a fan. I was talking to Collings about this because he likes the um, – Collings who edits this show. He he uh, he likes the Assassin's Creed games. Mm. But I find all those Ubisoft games like you, you get a tower and you liberate a tower and uh-huh, sure. whatever. I'm not a fan. But also I understand why people buy them. That's what we're talking about. Netflix yeah. is creating a, a, a Assassin's a, Creed, Creed series, right? Because right? uh-huh. there's a live action series in the works described as an epic and genre-bending project along with animated and they anime. They mean sci-fi and fantasy together. Yes, they do. Sci-fi and history together. That's right. Along with animated and anime adaptations. Oh. So there you go. Okay. I made it through six minutes of the movie. You watched some of it I made too. It to, I reckon I made it to... A third, maybe? Yeah. A third of that movie. It's so rough, boring. Man. It's a boring. <laughs> Why is it so, so boring? It's boring. It's a boring ass movie. Yeah. The stuff in the past is better? I don't know if it is. I think it's both I both I think both time periods are the worst time period. Are both of his parents assassins, maybe? Or they're from different ones a Templar and one's an assassin was or something. Is that the plot of that movie? I don't know, Mason. I don't think it I don't know was. Six minutes of no, it. I don't think it was. Yeah. yeah, so I just like the big claw arm that bashed him against walls and stuff. That is fun. Yeah, they didn't have that in the. Uh, he just lies down in a bed. Yep, in the thing. Yep. But I, um, it's a good premise. It is, yeah. And that was the year that I boldly proclaimed, if you recall, <laughs> that it's either that movie or Warcraft would thoroughly shatter the video game co- uh, curse. That's right. And I know some people like love Warcraft. Yeah. But that didn't happen. None of those things that I mentioned happened. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, speaking of Warcraft, yeah. here's a little bloody twist. segue Here for we you. Go. A little twist and a segue. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, director of Warcraft, Duncan Jones, mm. otherwise known as Zowie Bowie. Yes. His dad. Yes. They're making a movie about him. They certainly and are. it looks awful. There's three trailers this week. It looks so bad. It looks so bad. There's Halloween Kills. Yes. Uh, which is a year out. Uh-huh. It was supposed to be this year, though. Midnight Sky, where George Clooney is like, I have to get a signal to space. It's in a Stella, but on Netflix. Either me or my daughter are already dead, you know. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. One of them One of us is mind. dead. That's going to be the twist of this it's gonna movie. going to be the twist. Uh, I like That's it. right. We're getting self-referential, even though it's not Midnight Sky <laughs> 3 yet. Can you believe how self-referential Midnight Sky 3 is going to be? It's crazy what we're doing. So, look, we could talk about those all Please. day. Yeah. Uh, we won't. But let's talk about Stardust. Oh, my God. It's... David Bowie. I got... Yeah, I didn't get very far into okay. this trailer. And then you made me watch the whole thing. I did, thing. it's true, yeah. It's a real <laughs> Assassin's Creed of a situation. Yeah. So as I understand it, speaking of because Duncan Jones, yes. uh, his, the, the, the Bowie slash Jones family does not approve of this adaptation and they won't allow any David Bowie music in it. Mm. So that's very cool. But he it? seems to be playing a lot of music. But what's in, he going to play, right? What, I think, do you think they're going to fade out every time? I think it was, uh, I might be wrong with the movie Selma. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther King's speeches they couldn't use because somebody owns those. Right. So they had to write. New speeches. Yeah, like, but that kind of were in the vein of something okay. he would say. And apparently it's, like, Did they have done to put, quite well. They had to but, put them through a thesaurus of some yeah, kind. Yeah, that's right, have, exactly. It was, it's like if you were copying somebody's <laughs> homework, but you couldn't. I've done that, You couldn't basically. copy it directly. You just had to find <laughs> fun similes. Um, yeah. Have you seen that episode of 30 Rock where uh, Jenna Maroney's character, is? she initially... I, but from your expression, I gather you have not. I've so, been most of them. So one of the one of the one of the characters, uh, Liz Lemon's best friend, uh, ish, decide, uh, is is signs onto a Janis Joplin uh, oh, biopic. Yeah, yes, I do remember. But this. as the the episode progresses, it turns out they 
they, they can't get the rights to anything. Mm. Like they can't get the rights to the music or the story or the name. So by the end of it, she's she's playing a character called Jackie Jomp Jomp. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and this kind of feels like that. this. It doesn't even look like David Bowie. No. And I like that guy. He's in that British show that I watched. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, a, uh, he's kind of a STDs and stuff, and he has to track down all his exes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and he's done, and he's going to be. Um, there's going to be a new version of Ripley, like a TV version, and it's going to be Andrew Scott as Ripley's Ripley. Believe it or not, no, like Ripley, Ripley's game and Ripley from ta- talented Mr. Ripley. Oh, I like talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, so it's going to be Andrew Scott as talented Mr. Ripley, and oh. this guy as Dicky. Oh, really? Is the Jude Law character. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and cool. and he did the mu- he does music for stuff. He did the music for Detectorists oh. and all sorts of stuff. And he was in Emma. He's been all over the place. Well, this like guy. Mark Maron's in this as well. Yeah. So like, there's talent in it. Yeah. But it looks like shit. <laughs> So it really does. It looks like a fake movie, and it, does, it really does. And it looks like it looks like. And look, I saw some. I saw a comment today of like, "Well, nobody sets out to make a bad movie, so you shouldn't make fun of it." And I'm like, "Yeah, but I don't think they set out to make a bad." Why movie. Why would you set out to make this thing that you I have none they, of the rights? I think they for. set out to make a cash in because Rocket Man did well yeah. and and Bohemian Rhapsody did well, so they're just like do a cheap cash in. Yeah, just I, famous I name agree. get in there. But also, it's again, it's one of those things of like. Why isn't it David Bowie and is this ego-driven rock star? Mm. Like, and I know th- this is supposed to be set in like the point where it it's was transition. Yeah, and it was like, like he, he wasn't he wasn't super famous in the UK, and then he comes to the US to do the Man Who Sold the World, and it wasn't that partic- like he wasn't particularly mm. a big star, and people didn't respond to him well, and that's the kind of thing. But I don't want to see that. I don't want to see another one of like who's this guy, and he's just a. And then he goes into the recording studio and they're like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, he's just a sad wallflower and he doesn't believe in himself. Yeah. And but the, I want to see like a, a crazy stuff. And then someone's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to show them something that they've never seen before. That's and, right. But uh, Patrick Williams does that great video on how all these movies are basically walk hard. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's this again. It absolutely <laughs> yeah, it's is this. this. Again. Yeah. yeah, but without the music. Yeah. So I've written here regarding how this guy looks. Johnny Flynn is his yeah. name. Um, he looks like – if you ever you – ever, um, you ever watch one of those post-apocalyptic movies and they all like all the like the mutants in the city, they worship like Elvis, but they don't really remember what yeah, Elvis okay, looks like yep, yep. or whatever and they think it's, you know, yeah. Bruce Campbell or something like that. It's something like the Warriors, like that kind yeah, of yeah. aesthetic. This movie feels like that, but like this is what they think David Bowie looks like, but they've mm. just got like a burnt picture of Noel Fielding from the Mighty Boosh. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, God, David Bowie. Yeah, you might we be bow right. to Bowie. Yeah, you, you know? might be right. So I, don't know. I mean, you're not, I mean, you're not right. Because like, that's not but, a real that's, thing. That's, that's not no, real. That's saying. all yeah, fan, yeah. fantasy, yes. That's definitely how it feels. Mm. Anyway, it looks bad. looks real bad. <laughs> and Assassin's Creed? I'm fascinated yeah. to say. Like, again, I'm not going to watch this, but I am fascinated. I just want to read the reviews when it comes out, just so I know what mechanism they're using so they don't have to play any of his songs. Yeah, absolutely. This like it's just going to be him on stage and he goes to strum and then it cuts to later and there's just screaming girls and he's going into his dressing room. I like, reckon they're going to try a- like knock off Bowie songs. Oh, they could get – what if they got Flight of the Concords? Oh, that'd be amazing. That would be good. What if they – oh, okay, look, here's is what it might be at Saving Grace. What if it's a parody? And they don't reveal it. Oh, until. that would be amazing! What if it's they get they get? Do you remember? I, I think. But well, why? I've mentioned this Bowie? a billion. I've mentioned this a billion times. Well, I don't know. I mentioned this a billion times with the movie, the Paul Rudd, Sean William Scott movie, Role Models. Yeah. yeah. They keep mentioning this song by <laughs> by Wings, and it's it's not a real song. But then in the end credits, you hear their version of the song. Yeah. And it's like a dead on Paul McCartney right, Wings yeah, song. Really get that guy yeah. to just do a whole bunch of oh, knockoff David. Me down. Exactly. <laughs> just get him to do a bunch of knockoff David Bowie songs that. Poking fun at the whole situation. That would work. I'd watch that. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's not that. It's not that. It's absolutely not that. It's just a, it's a, it's again, it's a, it's a Bohemian Rhapsody knockoff. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. we've probably talked about this too long, but Assassin's Creed. Yes. Give it another crack. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. It's a good core idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Observer have mentioned uh, that they, 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 talk, they spoke with uh, Comscore's Paul Dergabedian. I've said that wrong, but he's got a theory as to why. Zack Snyder is make is being allowed to make this very expensive Snyder because he has some dirt on some WB executives. Exactly. No, no. Really? no. It says um, if it doesn't make hard financial or objective financial sense on its face, uh-huh. then there are subjective motivations and factors at play. They want to be in the Zack Snyder business, just like Warner's wants to be in the Christopher Nolan business. It's a long term strategy, so it basically stops him from going to other studios and working with them. You keep him on oh. the books. You keep him on side. Okay. He's making your movies. Okay, sure. Essentially. <laughs> oh. So what do you think of that? Do you think there could be some truth to that? I guess. But, I mean, what's he going to do after this? Just more DC movies? That's what people were going to be a big petition for, didn't you know? Oh. 
I guess he is in a sense. He is the guar- He's a guaranteed money maker for a certain percentage of the population. I agree. Right? Yes. Yeah. Us, us too. Us. We love his movies. I think if you gave him a lower budget, mm-hmm. like not the four hundred million dollars that's gone into Justice League. Yes. Yeah, he definitely. He's, it, it, he's, he's got Paul. Definitely. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. I think that's a really interesting theory that I'd imagine there's probably some validity to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Spider-Man 3, whatever that's called, is beginning to fill, oh. just as Uncharted wraps, along with uh, Shang-Chi. It's done. It's in the can. It was quick. Yeah. No, I think it's been filming for a while and then shut down and then came back. Huh. Yeah. But uh, both those I'm looking forward to. Spider-Man I'm definitely looking forward to because it looks like it could be a Spider-Verse thing. Mm-hmm. But I'm very interested in Shang-Chi. Me too. Because it uh, looks Kung like Fu. it's going to be very different. Yes. I mean, maybe. I mean, there'll be know. lots of punches and kicks like all the other Marvel exactly. movies, but, but even more so. Mm. So I'm all about that. So there you go. Um, and nothing else to say except good on them. Good on Hollywood. Get, you get onward, onward to stardom, everyone. More like Hollywood and so forth. Mm. Uh, Deadline are also. Tax time, scariest time, scariest of, time year. of the year. Yes, yes, yes. Michael B. Jordan, according to Deadline, has been offered the chance to star and direct in Creed 3, which would be his first uh, directorial turn. Oh, do you think they'll call it Threed? Three. Ooh, if there's three, if there's two, you know. And one, it'll be in 3D. Well, one, no. It's called why, Threed and it's why, in 3D. Why James, be 3D? James 3D. It'll come straight to streaming because everything's, everyone's trapped at home, Mason. That's the perfect, <laughs> the perfect solution. No one's putting on glasses in their house, Mason. It was then the punches stream. come right at you. Yeah, that's true. I played, I remember when 3D came to home televisions and mm-hmm. maybe my TV does it now. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. But the I had one in like 2012 that had 3D and I played um, one of the Killzone games in 3D uh-huh. and I did it for like 30 seconds and I went, mm, no, <laughs> and I like this. Because <laughs> right. like, so, the, like, the frame rate looks worse, everything yeah. looks more jaggedy because mm-hmm. you're getting half of the pixels or whatever Okay, but works. don't you think it's worth it? Given that we're not paying for this, yeah. just to see an entire audience of people wait, go go thirty seconds into three, and yeah. then just all stand up and go, nope. No, yeah, I guess, that, I guess that would be worth it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other thing is about this: the Creed logo will be one of the thre- one of the E's is backwards. Yep. That's how they do it, really. Yeah, or both. No, because then it would be Creed thirty three. Yeah, 30. maybe he's turning thirty three though. Oh, yeah, maybe and on his thirty third birthday, he has to fight Rocky. Maybe it's taking place at the same time as Naked Gun thirty three and a third. Oh, okay, that's very good. So he's he's having a he's having just a like a a real heart wrenching you know situation where he's he doesn't know if he's strong enough to beat this new. Boxing. It's OJ Simpson. He has to fight OJ Simpson. Exactly. <laughs> he's from those and, he's, and his wife is going deaf or whatever's happening in that. And they've yes. got they've got too many kids and they don't know what's going on. But also, yeah, just uh, just Leslie Nielsen's in the background falling face first in a cake or whatever. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm do it. Mm-hmm. So if it's called three, yes, would it be T H R E E D? Yeah, and it's T-H-R- in, and it's in three D. Yeah, it's T H R E E apostrophe D. Yeah, three D. Threed. Yes. And he's wearing 3D glasses in the yeah. poster that will be made up by the Weekly Planet poster. <laughs> Twitter yep. and Instagram account. Until he gets sick of it. <laughs> He'll keep doing this apparently. <laughs> we don't do this on purpose, by the way. Do you think? No. I'm just bad with names of things. It's and... great, same. We used to do this before we yeah. did this. We'd just be like, what's that movie? And we'd just name the things that we remember from it. Do you think there'd be a way to get those posted, posters printed or do you think yeah. it would be a massive copyright? No, we can print them. And we could say they're parody or whatever. Yeah, yeah anyway, I don't know. Um, Wait, are we selling them? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or people can print it themselves, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wonder Woman's, ex, uh, according to Variety, uh, Christmas release date. I was going to say Xmas, but uh, some people don't like that. Mm-hmm. But that's, you know, so I'm, I'm catering to all. Uh, <laughs> apparently their release date. The release date. But of, also DC wanted, don't want it to be. Called Xmas. Well, they want they? They to call it DC. DC. That's right. <laughs> I think DC. This is a very Dave good name. Christmas. <laughs> Dave is Christmas. what it stands for. Okay, yeah. good. They bought the copyright on Jesus. Oh, really? So now it's Dave Christmas. Great. Yeah, yeah. Isn't he? When's he coming back? Aren't people like he's coming back soon? Oh, maybe. Hope so. I guess, doesn't that mean it's the end of the world if he comes back? Yeah, but that'd be sick, wouldn't it? Yeah, actually, it'd be kind of, <laughs> kind of a relief. Yeah. And then we get to figure out what kind of apocalypse dudes we are. Do you think he'd, he'd appear around the world? Like the the um, Kim Kardashian's fa- like father's As a hologram. hologram would be mm-hmm. like, you've been chosen and you've been chosen or whatever. And I'd be like, yes. It's more like Oprah, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm, whatever. He'd be, <laughs> he'd be doing an Oprah, but people yeah, would be yeah. like, that's a bit of a dated reference, Jesus. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know you've been gone for 2,000 years, but you could have picked a book. You could have done a Joe Rogan thing or whatever and that's go, right. whoa, or whatever he does. Mm. Talk about Do you PCP. think that's what he does? Yeah, he'd just, or he goes on the Joe Rogan podcast. That's what yes, he does. Yes, that's how he announces it. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. And then it gets taken off by Spotify accidentally and everybody fucking flips out about free speech or whatever the fuck goes on with that. 
Anyway, Wonder Woman might be moved. Okay. They say because huh. obviously because our uh, case is in the US and be careful. The DC star. The DC star. Probably been rescheduled good. to DC star. Thank you. Uh, that uh, that's good. Thank you. It's very good. That um, yeah, case in the US is spiking. So be careful, yeah. obviously, if you're there. So I think it probably will be moved. But yeah. um, but we'll see. Mm. You never know. I was thinking just today. Trump said there's going to be a cure in a matter of weeks. So. Well, that's, that's, well, a that's, matter of weeks is only a matter of weeks away, so that's yeah, perfect. And then you, you administer it in that week. Oh, he's going to do it himself. I assume so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a matter of people. So that's probably, true, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You would, I'm just, I was thinking this week uh, it might be a little bit longer for me to go back to the cinemas even when they reopen them yeah. because, as I've mentioned to you and as the listeners of the podcast probably know, I'm a, a notorious throat clearer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll yeah. be in the – there's nothing wrong with me, but I'll be in the cinema just being like – No, everything's fine, guys. No, I've got a mask <laughs> on. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, we should see – I will keep looking to see when Tenet is coming so we can do an episode on it. Yep. Uh, still nothing's going <laughs> okay, on. Okay, then so great. Terrific. But uh, it's still mm. not showing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's next, Mason? Don't know. Here we go. Deadline are reporting that filmmaker Mohammed Daib, Daib? – uh, he's going to helm Moonlight. He's an Egyptian uh, filmmaker who's worked on films such as Cairo, 678 and Clash. You said Moon Knight, right? What did I say? You said Moonlighter. Yeah, Moonlighter. Okay, right. Um, and it's a, it's a lighter shape. But he means like Moon Knighter, moon... obviously, the famous Marvel character Moon Knighter. Moon Knighter, moon Knighter yeah. Uh, and Oscar Isaac is apparently in talks uh, to play Mark Spector. I saw that. Yeah, that's exciting. Also, David Diggs and Nick Kroll, uh, according to Murphy, uh, Murphy's Multiverse, uh, are being eyed for roles also. David Diggs, <laughs> you might know, he was in um, Hamilton. And oh. he was also in the new Snowpiercer. And Nick Kroll, you'll know, is Bobby Bottle Service. <laughs> exactly. So I think all of that yeah. is great. This yeah. is a TV show, by the way. Yes. So Disney are bringing Oscar Isaac back into the fold and mm-hmm. they're like, you've got great hair and, that, that's right. and you fit the role of Moon Knight. And that's, that's right, yeah. Cool, I think. So, yeah, it seems like they're really they're getting these Marvel TV shows into gear because... Um, We're all at home still. All at home still and whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be yeah, for yeah. 100 million years. Yeah. <laughs> What else have we got? Well, it's only a matter of weeks. Exactly. So. I've missed a bit of news, but I'll come back to it. Oh. It's exciting. Not exciting, but we get to do that <laughs> joke that we do. Um, <laughs> Tomb Raider sequel. I can't wait. Tomb Raider I can't <laughs> wait to see what James considers our joke. <laughs> <laughs> Tomb Raider sequel has been delayed with no release date. Okay. And you mentioned this before the show. Oh, but- no, it should, be, uh, it should just be uh, Tomb Raider. Lara Croft explores her apartment. Yes. She, doesn't have the man- <laughs> she doesn't have the manor anymore. She just explores the the recesses of her apartment where she lives. Oh, my God, that's so exciting. I was going to say, did you see the trailer for Songbird, the new Michael Bay produced thing? Oh, yeah, we should talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's COVID-23. Yep, uh-huh. And it's evolved to the point and society is everyone's inside and yep. Skyping each other. But, but it's all right because the US Marines are there. Thank goodness. To come to your house to shoot you or something in yeah, this movie? Yeah, thank God they're here. I don't know what's going on yeah. in that movie. Nobody okay. wants this. Nope. I cannot stress that enough. Yep. Mm. Nobody fucking wants this. Nope. Maybe in 10 years when we're all dead, <laughs> then you can put it out. But nobody wants Project this. Project it on our graves, yeah. yes. Are you going to watch this when it comes out? Nope. Me neither. No, because it'll be 150 minutes long Even probably. if it was like a pandemic and there's zombies. Or Pandemic because Aliens or whatever. I watched uh-huh. Love and Monsters recently. Pandemic because of Monsters and oh. Love. I don't want people <laughs> coughing into each other's faces in the military yeah. shooting. Uh, what, if it's just, uh, what if it's just throat clearing, James? Is that all right? Mm, I'm still not a big fan, though. Okay, that's fair enough. I need there's anybody else. No. Um, and I, I also get from the trailer. I don't even want to watch the trailer when there are people like, oh, this thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I don't even want to, yeah. I don't want to see it. I get this. the sense from the trailer there's going to be some weird, like, sermonizing about something. Can't wait. It'll be, I mean, there's there's two sides to every deadly pandemic, isn't there? Yes, I guess there are. Yep. I mean, some of them are dumber than others. Yeah. But yes. Um, you mentioned this before the show. Comic Book Resources said, mm-hmm. uh, did you know? Oh, this is this could really lead into our Ooh. spin-off podcast where we do clickbait. But yeah, do you know? So you got I thought, this, I thought, I thought this, was, uh, this was worthy enough for the regular podcast. I think there's some validity to it. But yes. also I think that if you enjoy us talking about this, you might enjoy our spin-off podcast. We got we got this covered covered mm. on BigSandwich.co. Uh, right. But this is from CBR. Rogue One's Felicity Jones teases Jin Erso's return. She says there's unfinished business. Uh, AKA, I didn't explode. I buried my head in the sand. Well, that's the thing. She's written here. Well, the the, the article's written here. Okay. Uh, Felicity Jones hinted at Jin Erso's possible return to the galaxy far, far away, either in a sequel or a spin-off. <laughs> Either she hinted sequel well, or spin-off. It's, it's, she says she told she told THR 
the Humdinger Report, which is, I believe, it's what it stands for. Sure. Uh, I just keep saying that reincarnation is totally possible in the Star Wars universe, so I feel there's unfinished business for Jin for sure. Now, here's the thing. I don't think there is reincarnation. I don't think there is either. I, I think... mean, you know what? There probably is in, but like, yeah. legends and whatever. And but... I guess technically... And there's cloning and there's, stuff. There's Snoke and clones But and why Emperor. would you clone her specifically? Right. Do you need a piece of data? Like she's got a bit of key bit of data. Oh, she got a piece of that data tape wedged in her head. <laughs> That's right. You know, when the planet destroying super laser yeah. hit her at ground zero right. and she was totally atomized. <laughs> like I ended, like if 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 it if she died, like she was in a spaceship and it got shot and yeah. then it spun off into space and you're like, oh, who knows who what knows? happened to her? That's legend. Even if she was like a bit further from the explosion. Yeah, like if it was like, well, legend says that she disappeared that day and who knows yeah. what. Like the laser came down like on her toes. She was swallowed by a blinding light. <laughs> right? She, and yeah. I love that because you see Cassian Andor's eyes like, exp- we've talked about this, yeah. like expand in fear yeah, just yeah. before he's just wiped from existence like yeah. that Sarah Connor, like flash forward to Judgment Day. And again, just so it says here, I think it would be fascinating to see her getting older and wiser and fighting the dark forces in the universe, of which there are many, it seems. Anyway, I like Felicity Jones in that movie. I would kind yeah. of like to see them worm their way out of this just to see totally. what they can do. I know they considered like a carbonite situation. At oh, one they point. trapped in it. There and... was like ideas to maybe write them out of it, but it was yeah, yeah. it was always kind of considered that they'd yeah. all be dead. But if, but but like we've seen like planets like Alderaan like blow up like a pinata. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's coming back from that. Yeah, but I mean, it didn't. The, to be fair, the planet didn't explode. Oh, wasn't it? It was at like one percent power like, or whatever. something, right? But the other thing is, I just shoved it to the other, yeah. shoved it to the south pole. Of yeah, the it's fine. She was caught in a, I don't know, she laser rip, a laser rip, yes. <laughs> which is good. It's good. <laughs> so, That's right. Yeah, yeah, it makes you stronger than ever. But I, I'm not a huge fan of like the first half of that movie. Yeah, right. But then I really like the last yeah, yeah. half, especially for the space stuff. But I like that character because also I read the the prequel book, uh-huh. Catalyst, I think it was called, yep. which really kind of fleshed out that world for me. So there's elements of that story that I like more that yeah. don't actually exist within that movie. Right. Okay, yeah. so how could you bring her back in the Star Wars universe? You can't. She's fucking atomized. What about uh, she was force Bunker, sensitive? Force uh, sensitive? Uh, no, And then her spirit not. became a ghost a or whatever. A droid runs in and shields her. Um, yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's just, it's, it's only a bad singeing. They find her and they. <laughs> it's a bad singeing. Yeah. <laughs> Rogue 2, just a bad singeing. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know, because technically we only see like light hit her. Okay, right. You know, so maybe she lives. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Right, right, right. And she's blind. Because of, and all her hair's. Mate, how about this? Right we see head. the light hit the ground and then cuts back to this, the Death Star thing, the, the control room, and they're like. Oh, I only, I only did the flashlight button. And then it cuts back down and they're like, cheese it! And they both run to a bunker or whatever or a spaceship. A spaceship. And, they get, and then, then, it, then it cuts back and they're like, okay, use the laser now. Yeah, and then, yeah. it go, then it goes back to the scene where the planet explodes yes. or whatever. You could definitely do a prequel, which okay. they are with Cassie and Andor. Okay, the remaining uh, major cast, who, who of these would you like to come back? Uh, In sequels? Diego, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Diego Luna. Yeah, I love him. He's good. He's good. Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. Again, though, but the, but for him, the laser literally hit him. It did, <laughs> like, didn't it? Yeah. He was in the tower, yeah, and it goes through the tower. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But I mean, still, yeah, still, I guess the laser wave, as we've mentioned. Yeah, Donnie Yen. Yeah, I, yeah, Mads Mikkelsen. This is a good cast. Is, it's a great cast. Alan Tudyk. I mean, he's yep. a robot, so he just doesn't matter. Back. He put it's his mind. He put his mind in the other one. Yep. Remember how he he hacks that other droid? Yeah, yeah, that's Easy true. Fix. Yeah. Riz Ahmed. Yep, great. Yang Wen. Do you see he's in that? Uh, the drummer's going deaf. Movie? No. The drummer's going deaf. That's the name. Put it on the poster. But <laughs> it's called Heavy Metal. I can't remember. It looks really good. Oh. Yeah. So I go on. And Forrest Whitaker. I mean, he's back all the time. He's so. back all the time. Yeah. 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 It's a killer cast, man. Yeah. Um, yes. All of those guys. Nice. But, uh, no, they all were atomized or shot or whatever. Yeah, that's true. The droid you could bring back. Yep. That's the only one that you could kind of yeah. write around. But whatever. But again, you could just invent some stuff. Yeah. What is too far, do you think? Too what if, far. To like what? What if they if they were like, listen, we have Star Trek teleporters. Mm. We zapped them out at the last second. Yeah. Be, that'd be too far. I think they'd probably be safer to say that they just not really explain it. Just be like, oh yeah, right, right. It was okay. a whatever percent, and and sure, she, it, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> right, it just yep. wasn't that bad. Yeah. We, I mean, you know what you could say? You could go. You could say that like some some kinds of explosions. If you're at ground zero, it's actually 
Yeah. Like it's safer at ground zero than that, it is further there out. There is that point in, um, yeah, Hiroshima yeah. where the actual point of impact is it's all like untouched. But also we see like a giant wave like coming at them. It's a whole thing. Did you know there is one man recorded as having survived both the explosions of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Recorded. So he's both times he's like, oh, not again. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. The first, second time he would do that. No, well, he was, he was from Nagasaki yeah. and he went to Hiroshima for work. Oh, yeah. And then the bomb went off and then he left and he went back How home. How did he get out? I don't know. <laughs> he just did. Maybe There's a your answer. Solar, solar wave. Yeah, so <laughs> they're good actually. Yeah, they're good. And then he survived the second one. Yeah. That's fucking incredible. Right. What are the odds? Sm- slim. Yeah. I'd say probably. Wolverine survived. Oh, yeah, that's true he did. <laughs> I mean, but he's a mutant man. Yeah. I do have this last bit of news. Okay, I'm ready. Um, uh, we, we were wondering uh, if everyone could chip in and do their part so we could all find some die to hunt, some time to die. <laughs> I fucked it. No, put that. No, 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 put that on the poster. I reckon. Whatever the thing you said. So uh, I mentioned Is that. Is there more news about this? Yes, because wow. they're shopping it around. Oh. Uh, we mentioned last week, but MGM were apparently looking for. This is for No Time to Die. Sorry, this joke's gone well beyond <laughs> understanding mm. without some explanation. But MGM uh, were looking for. We talked about last week how Netflix and Apple. Yes. Or shopping, shopping around. And then MGM were like, no, actually, we're preserving the theatrical experience because they couldn't sell it. Yep. But they were looking for 65 to 70 million, even 800 million price tag for this movie. And which also. Wait, it, explain that again? Th- that's what they want for it. $800 million. $800 million. And people are offering how much? Uh, well, that. Apple were the only one who was seriously considering and they offered them between 350 to 400 million, okay. which Apple could do. That's yep. nothing to them. That's sure. peanuts. Apple yeah. could buy Disney like a million times oh. over. Uh, but well, why don't you, Apple? Yeah, Apple, you cowards. But um, eight hundred is too much, obviously. But if mm. it went to cinemas and it made like a billion, yeah, they wouldn't make eight hundred million dollars because yeah, right. every if, you know things get whittled away. And, Only the bloody uh, snack bar would. No, oh, you're not wrong. Well, that's what I'm talking about, though. Like cinemas take a cut, and yep, mm-hmm. whatever else takes a cut. I don't have in front of me how that works. But the other thing is, and I think you eight hundred million this. dollars. Well, one one medium popcorn. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, very good. Uh, so very expensive. Hopefully. It might be a better idea though to look at like a four hundred million dollar price tag for this. Are we giving advice to? to no, no, I'm now. just saying like depending on what happens. Yeah, right. You know, because they if they they could put this out and it doesn't make that money and they've yeah. lost this opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Then again, they could just put it to safe streaming anyway. But I don't know. They just uh, some enterprising uh, intern at MGM could just leak it on the internet for us. We could watch it for nothing. We love that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that. Um, GoFundMe though, there's a GoFundMe, which I think you alerted me to. Oh, that's right. Where somebody wants to buy, uh, the rights. Yeah. And their, the, their goal is like buy. $60 million or something. No, I think it's more to, let me bring it up. 60 million pounds? No, it's way 600 more 600 million that. pounds. Let me check this out. I did, I did look at $20. Here we go. Oh, yeah, buddy, go. Here this we is go. from five days ago. Oh, yes. Uh, so what they want is 607 million pounds. Okay. Uh, which is too much. Yes. And at the moment <laughs> they have 740 pounds. Oh, so, <laughs> well. So it's not enough. This is a real reverse remake The Last Jedi situation. Nobody's willing to pay this. Yeah. So the, the name of this is Bond Saves Christmas. Who gets this though? What do you mean? Oh, who gets the what money? What are they going to do with it? I don't know. I'm just having a look here. What do you get for your, like, let's say I put in 50 pounds sterling. Yes. 50 of the Queen's finest finest doshes. Oh, my goodness. What do I get? Do I get my name in the credits? <laughs> do I get Do I get my name as a as a background character? Wow. Like, do, do they have to film an additional scene where Bond goes to some sort of corporate retreat and there's a bunch of characters who have, like, hello, my name is stickers <laughs> on them and my name is on the sticker? <laughs> And then Bond shoots me. I mean, it's entirely possible. All of those things you're talking about are very yeah. realistic. Does everybody get a personal video call from Daniel Craig? Would he do it? If No. Oh. But he has to. That's the thing. Oh, but he has to. <laughs> yeah, that, him. that would be great. It's just him. He's like he's finally, he's finally put Bond behind him. He's done. He's put in the hard yards for more than a decade at this point. <laughs> and he sits down and then he suddenly starts getting these, these Skype calls from all around the world. And he's like, hello. And they're like, hello, Daniel, I'm here to get my... Video uh, greeting from you, Daniel. Uh, I, I paid he's like, t- fine, but I'm doing him in portrait. Yeah. 
Um, they've, I've, there's a Bond Save Christmas Twitter handle. Okay. I don't begrudge this either. Mm-hmm. Go for it, man. Yeah, you can I mean, do it's it. not going to work. No, it's not. Uh, it says uh, th- there's an Imagine article. the precedent if it did. It would, it would really. It Imagine would, the president if it did. I don't think this is a hot enough property to do this. No. I think you could definitely yeah. get clo- no. Marvel maybe, but I wouldn't donate to that, <laughs> even if it was something I really wanted to see. Because yeah. mm-hmm. also I don't know this guy. No, I don't true. know whether he's just going to steal six hundred and seven million pounds. <laughs> exactly. And if he, oh my god, what if he did? What a what a <laughs> what a ah uh, king move. I mean, to be fair though, like he, what he's going to take like thirty off me, like it's, thirty million. No, just thirty. Oh pounds, yeah, no, that's true. Know? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. But no, so yeah, they've pinned on the uh, Twitter page. No money, no money to burn. How Bond crowdfunder crowdfunder could be the way forward. Mm. Yeah. If we pay enough money, mm. we buy the rights, and then we get them to change. James Bond's name to James Broccoli <laughs> in honour of the producing team's family name, Broccoli. They'd love it too. They would love it. They'd be like, why didn't we think of this? Yeah, it's a good point. Have your money back. <laughs> <laughs> what about Broccoli Bond? I don't mind that either. And you make it like a kid's show. It's yes. like James Bond Jr. except they're all fruit or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. But he's not a Broccoli. He's a carrot. Oh, he's just a- <laughs> <laughs> it's just a family name. Yeah, just, he's adopted. Oh, he's adopted because of the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. the avalanche or whatever. The Maybe his brother's his broccoli. Family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Or he's just a human man hunting fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and his name's James Broccoli or Broccoli Bond or whatever you said. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's all something, isn't it? I think it is. Yep. This is, <laughs> yep. It's certainly a segment on this podcast. It's certainly no worse than anything else we've said on this. <laughs> That came about because I'm like, would they rename Pinewood Studios <laughs> after me? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. If I put in 20 pounds, Mace, Mace, yeah, Mace maybe Studios. They would. Yeah. Maybe they would. I like yeah. that. Mm. It's good. I love convenient deliveries of HelloFresh right to my doorstep for easy home cooking with my family. Do you love that, Mason? Well, you would love that because you're a smart man. <laughs> I'm a smart man who knows what I want in terms of recipes. But I love incredible meal kits delivered to your family. Exactly, yes, because the recipes, they're easy to follow, they're quick to make with simple steps and pictures to guide you along the way and you can actually save 40% by using HelloFresh versus shopping at your dumb local Grocery store. James, I know they're so easy to follow with all the great pictures and such because I look in your window <laughs> as you're making them with your family, <laughs> wishing it were my family. You're just out in the cold That's rubbing right. your hand. You've got one gloved hand That's and right. you're rubbing them together. I've got one fingerless glove and one gloveless <laughs> set of fingers. I only had the one. And it's more convenient too. HelloFresh delivers fresh, high-quality, pre-proportioned ingredients, which is really important, so you can make meals that are delicious and nutritious. And over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure peak flavor and ripeness. Very there's, nice. There's no, there's no food middleman who gets in there. He's touching all the stuff. You That's know right. What I mean? One for them, one for oh, me. Oh, no, thank you. That's right. Since they offset their operation, travel and shipping emissions, HelloFresh's carbon footprints is 25% lower than store-bought grocery-made meals. Cop that store-bought grocery-made meals. That's right. And that's via the University of Michigan. So, yeah, they're throwing that right in your face, store-bought grocery meals. HelloFresh also donated, and this is great, 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019. And this year they're stepping up food donations to local communities amid uh, the coronavirus cases, My which goodness, is really good great. Yeah. And also, unlike a lot of brand sponsors that we read, we're not allowed to say coronavirus. So they're, they're just, they're, they've got it right in there. That's and I right. appreciate that. Yeah. They tell it like it is. And that's why, Mason, they're America's number one meal kit. That's you, want nice. a per, you want a personal endorsement? I got one. Uh, I think I've talked about this before, or maybe I haven't, but the rosemary and parmesan crumbed chicken burger with cos lettuce, salad and mayo. Again, easy to follow, delicious. Put that all together, mate. With your friends hanging outside, just make sure he gets a good look at it. <laughs> That's right. Don't give him any, though, obviously. No, yeah. <laughs> no just, just have him sitting out there imagining your head's turning into a big uh, rosemary and parmesan exactly, crumb thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can actually go to hellofresh.com slash weeklyplanet90, as in Nino, and use code weeklyplanet90 to get $90 off, including yes. free shipping. That's a ton of free meals. I know. That's hellofresh.com slash weeklyplanet90 and use code weeklyplanet90 to get $90 off, including free shipping. That's linked below if you do want to check it out. But my goodness, my goodness. I cannot wait to see all the fabulous meals you guys are going to be making. <laughs> I know. All right, thanks for uh, the ad. You're me, welcome. Me and Mason. Hey, you're welcome, <laughs> me and you. Yeah, and Collingswood sends over the copies and HelloFresh, you know what I mean? Yeah, thanks to everyone. Thanks to the listeners. Yep. 
End Thanks. of the show, I yeah. reckon. Yeah, that's <laughs> we're done. Yeah, yeah, let's it's it's quit here. If you look at your time codes though, it'll look like that there's more show, but there's not. It's just it's just white noise. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. I mean, why would we do any more after this? We've peaked. We've peaked. Um, let's talk about the Mandalorian. Okay, loved it. Spoilers? Uh yes, I I think so. Spo- yeah. Like, I mean, if you if By the time this goes, if out, you're a fan of the Mandalorian, Mandalorian yeah. uh, if you've never seen the Mandalorian. Get the free trial on Disney Plus and watch the whole season, and then episode one of season two, exactly. and uh, and you and you're set. I think you've got a week from right now. Totally, you do. Um, I think, and I there were some episodes that I really enjoyed from last season. Also, but, just side note, uh, hmm. I had as soon as I started Disney Plus on my TV, I had to update the app because it's been so long uh, since yeah, I yeah, used yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, mine, mine kept st- it took me like an hour to get it to work. Okay, great. I mean, I didn't sit there for an hour because I was doing other things and whatever. But he sat there for an hour. Folks. I sat there for an hour. Yeah. I can't. I, I could literally cannot sit anywhere for an hour. This is like a break for me. Doing <laughs> this hour. is like a break. Doing this job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> doing this. Doing this just. You, you, it's like you're a man like pulling that big stone wheel somehow on a rope and it's turning a turning a thing in a well in olden times and you're like, oh, this is such a break for me. This is, feels good. But I get that like, you know, because people who go to work when they have kids and they that stay torture, extra- That torture wheel and Conan the Barbarian. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how people go to go to work and they enjoy it, you know, because it's like a break. From no, like, I don't know about that. Yeah, but you know, you know what I'm talking no, about. No, I do. I because yeah. I remember like you go to like a staff meeting. This is when I was a, when I was a teacher, uh-huh. and the meeting ends and there's people like asking questions. It's like you just want to hang around because yeah. you hate your kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now that's me, I guess. Yeah. No, I love my kids, but but it's literally like. Other than you, yes. there is nobody like interrupting me. That's I don't, true. No one's calling me or yep. I don't check it really. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. yeah, this is like a break. I have. I can uh, focus on one thing. I, I don't go to that many meetings at my actual job, but occasionally they'll do like a, like a, you go into town and you do like a training situation and, the, yeah. and you're all in a boardroom or whatever. And there's just, a, there's just a bunch of old dudes who are just like, they just want to tell this stories. This is my moment. And, yeah. and you're just like, if guys, we all just shush. Yeah. We'll get to go home at, uh, after lunch. We're out but of if here. you just and they're like, eh, what? What else? And then some guys just like, well, back in 1965, yeah, well, this is, and you're well, like, actually, I know it's <laughs> like this, but let me tell an irrelevant story <laughs> from the past, if you could. Yeah, yeah, teaching's like big on that. I bet, and it's like everybody's like, well, I actually have something to say, and I just want to be like, you know what? Not everyone has to <laughs> say something. That's true. Yeah, we can all be quiet. Yeah, <laughs> then we, we can want. all leave. Yeah, <laughs> just let us leave. Want? Just let us leave. <laughs> How about this? You keep telling your story and I'll leave. Yeah. I just leave. Yeah, exactly. Mature age students as well at uni. <laughs> I wonder though if I went back to uni, which I never would. Yeah. Maybe if, something turns over in your mind. That's what I'm saying. Maybe yeah. it would. Maybe I'm like, actually, I'm here to, for an education. And I'm going to hold up everybody. Yeah. Maybe in future I'll be minutes. like, well, back in my day, people would always tell long, boring stories <laughs> at this meeting. But I'm, I remember thinking to myself, I'll never become that guy. I remember it was a beautiful sunny day and I came in here and I always thought, to, you know, because <laughs> the switch just flipped. You. Yeah, that's right. Flipped. You're different. Mm. You're different. Anyway, Mandalorian. Uh, yes. yeah, one of my favourite episodes from last season was the, the Bill Burr get on a ship and mm-hmm. kill a bunch of droids. I think yeah. that might have been my favourite. This might be my favourite now. There you go. Yeah. Strong, strong star. Because when it came back, I wasn't like, yay, it's back, can't wait. I was kind of like, yeah, I like some of those I more than others. I watched it today. And, I, it's, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I loved it. Yeah. And also, uh, I mean, I made that tweet about Tatooine. We got in a bit of a bloody oh, yeah. tiff, mate. <laughs> how I said it's a it's a dog shit planet for idiots. I didn't mean in terms of like them using that in this story. Uh-huh. I just meant it's a fucking horrible place. Oh yeah, just for sure. In general, in a world where there are there is the technology to travel to any other world. Yeah, you know. I mean, obviously they're marooned there and whatever. Yeah, but just join the just join the empire or whatever. Yeah, they're gone. They're join Death Star the exploded. join the weird mechanics league or whatever those guys are. <laughs> yes, join the weird mechanics league. But um, I think it was an an excellent use of tattooing because I'm yeah. like, I don't want to go back to tattooing. I'm fucking, mm. I've, I've seen the bar and I've seen the speeders and I've seen the sand people. Yeah, right. But this was all great. And it's just, it's there's a certain vibe to it where it doesn't all, like it doesn't necessarily all look flawless. Yeah. It, it, but there's a certain. That, that one-eyed Cyclops man at the start. John Leguizamo. Yes, John Leguizamo. Yeah. Uh, but there's like. There's a moment I think where you see um, the Mandalorian get off his speeder bike, yeah, and it it doesn't feel a hundred percent right, but at the same time it feels a hundred percent right for Star Wars, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like, this is like it, they don't have to get it perfect. There is there, no. it's, it's okay to, that it might look like there's some mirrors under a regular motorbike or whatever, and they're yeah. just re- reflecting the, the sand. Yeah, just looks just a good. Yeah, that's vibe. what they did. That's I think they did do. They They've nailed the that, vibe. Yeah. I know? agree. Yeah. I also think um, there's a few scenes in this, and it was more the opening when. 
again, spoilers, where he's going, he's trying to find other Mandalorians. Oh, that also another thing where they're just mm. like, you know what, that, the thing that felt most like a 1970s Star Wars anything is the moment right at the start where they go to like an underground rest, uh, you know, yeah. b- battle thing. Gamorrean guards, man. That's right. And it's just like, it's just a regular boxing ring. It's got some yeah. ropes and stuff on it. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, a- oh, we had a gym. We rented a gym for an afternoon. <laughs> yeah. We just chucked everybody in there. But it also felt leading up to that where he's walking, where being aware of that technology, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, they've clearly just shot this against. I felt like. To me, it felt initially that the scale had been pulled back because yeah. I knew that trick. So I yeah, see right. him walking towards a, a, down a path, and I know that path's going to end about a foot from where. They yeah, cut. right. Uh-huh. But then when they get to Tatooine, they've they've made it so the scale of it feels bigger. I mm. feel this trick, which I only just found out about at the end of last season. Yeah, right. They've found find, found ways the trick to kind specifically of, for people who don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry, they're, yeah. they're they're filming this in a room. Yeah. essentially a fairly big, like a warehouse. Yeah, that's got like LCD screens around it, right? And on the roof for lighting. And on the roof, and, it, and that's projecting. The, and then they and they'll put in like a bar and sand yeah. on the floor. And so and they're whatever. projecting the environment on it, so yes. people don't have to act to a blue screen. But and yeah. also when you move the camera, the the environment shifts, so yes. it looks 3D to the camera. But so I thought, now that I know this trick, it's going to feel more like this this set. Yeah, right. But it didn't. Mm. Uh, from when they got a tattooing in particular, it just felt like expansive environments. Yeah. And mm-hmm. obviously because they're pulling back and they're doing big CGI shots of everything and whatever. Yeah. But I love Timothy Olyphant. Yeah. I love how the Boba Fett armor, as we suspected, does not fit in. It's too, it's too small for all. him. He's too tall for it. Yeah. I think we, we mentioned that on mid riff top. We mentioned that on the on a video where I think we did we something about yeah. Star Wars characters that might come back or something mm. like that. And we're like, yeah, it's not gonna it's gonna be too. It is too small. It's for like him. six one. It's yeah. Not gonna... Like he's he's not he's not wearing the full Boba Fett suit. He's just wearing like bits and this is regular it's clothes. Mostly it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, mm. Mm. I'd never noticed the piping. Down to the glove. Oh, yeah, right. I uh-huh. actually look, went, went back and looked at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that is a thing. Yeah, right. That dude, though, he's killing it, mate. He was great. Yeah. I really enjoyed him. I love I love his hair and beard situation. Yeah, good, good stuff, right? I love it right? all. Yeah, good, it's great. <laughs> I think it's terrific. Good work, Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, very handsome man. Yeah. Also, you know he's a main character in Star Wars because he's much more handsome than literally everybody else. That's true, <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? They're all <laughs> just any weep- and aliens. He doesn't have any weeping boils on his yeah, face, yeah. that's it. I like, mean, he could be a you know he could be dead by the end of the episode, but in this instance, yeah. again, spoilers, he's not. He's not. He's part. He's going to be part of whatever team that is. I think you'll. I think you'll give him back the armor. As like a. I'll give him. Yeah, that's what do I. Do you think that's best car armor because it's bulletproof? You see him get shot at one point. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I. It's tough to say. Also, this it. And I'd never thought about this before, but the Boba Fett's armor like belies the idea that people in the Star Wars universe can't read because it's got a little digital readout with numbers and yes, letters and stuff does. on yeah, it. Yeah. So. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's a previous generation's yeah. armor, and that's why it looks like that. Maybe it's before Beskar was a thing. No, I think Beskar was always kind of a thing. In the, but isn't but doesn't the isn't the Mandalorian's armor initially not Beskar? I don't. And he gets it. I well, we we've got a video coming up this week Ooh. on uh, the Bounty Hunter video game where oh, he yeah. plays Jango Fett, and in canon, um, he stole that armor. They they think the Mandalorians are yeah, like right. he's not one of us. He stole. Oh, it. I see. Right, right, right. But I don't know whether it's ever. Said uh, most of the armor is Beska. Beska, but what I'm saying is, tell. in the previous season, yeah, didn't he have? Didn't the Mandalorian start? Oh with yeah, he had like a, he had regular like armor. Shift, yeah, and then whatever. they built the new suit for him, right? So I'm yeah, saying yeah. Oh, yeah, that right. maybe this version is from before Bes- making Beskar was it, or maybe he just. But had it the, is bulletproof though. Yeah, is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, like it doesn't get damaged. Like the paint comes off it, but it yeah, right, right. Then again, it's got a ding in it. it does have a ding in it. Yeah, that's also we finally get to see one of those rockets being fired. Pretty good, right? Very oh no, tall. we see it in episode two. Oh, I wasn't watching, but it wasn't as good. I also like he always to bow down like he's meeting the queen <laughs> <laughs> to shoot the rocket. <laughs> That'd be pretty good if you needed to assassinate the queen. <laughs> oh mate, you'd, you'd never over. see it coming. It'd kill you and her, but you'd get the job done. That's yeah, right. He's firing a few of those, yeah. but I also get the sense that they, because me and my brother were talking about this, the one that you don't like. Go on. Is Boba Fett famous? In the oh. galaxy. And I feel like he is because when he turns up, there's that moment of recognition. He kills a few and then the rest of them run, presumably because they Oh, when, when, they when, who when he what's, is. What's, his, what's, the, what's the character's name? Uh, his name is. Cobb Vanth? Mm, yeah, something like that. Cobb Vanth. Cobb Vanth, okay, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. But I think, yeah, because if you saw a guy wearing that, you'd just be like, that's probably Boba Fett because there's a 
hundred billion people in the galaxy. Yeah. I don't know how. Or maybe be. I think maybe you perhaps, would have seen him before. But they'd be they'd know Mandalorians maybe. So maybe they just didn't. But there's not that many of them. Uh, remember? Because yeah, he's like, right. it's just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Mm. Anyway, I liked how they toned down the Baby Yoda stuff. You don't need to get into that every That's true. week. He's just around, yeah. He's just around. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, that crate dragon, which sometimes has legs in other versions, is oh. like an actual like dra- scuttering dragon. Maybe they're, maybe they're mutants and some have maybe, legs and yeah. stuff like that, yeah. Anyway, it's a big Tremors alien yep, thing. That's a big sandworm situation. Cool. I thought initially at the start of the episode it was going to be uh, Sarlacc. Moving Sarlacc. Moving Sarlacc, yeah. They have been, when they're little, they can move, I oh, think. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that whole team up with the sand people and yep. getting together to make that happen yeah, was yeah. awesome. That's true. And they're jetpacking about. They're jetpacking about. And there's about. lots of little references. There's that moment where Timothy Olyphant's like, it's going to be great. I don't know if you've ever seen that Steven Spielberg, George Lucas conversation. No. But it's in the episode one documentary oh. where they're like, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going okay, to be great. Right, and they're right. just like okay. saying it to each other. But yeah, I think you're right. I think that uh, the Mandalorian is going to put that armor in his ship mm. and then later he's going to, Bring the team together. I need you. And he's going to be like, when well, you can have the, the armor back, because it's not about the armor. It's yeah. about your midriff. Unless Boba Fett something. Oh, Boba Fett something. Um, should we talk about Boba Fett? Well, Why would back, we? There's no probably. reason to. That's true. Nah, he's back there, But he's he? back probably, and yeah. maybe he got all his hair melted off by acid. Now, we were talking about this pre-recording this episode. Yeah. Uh, we wondered whether if, if it's – because it's Temuera Morrison, so yes. it's either definitively Boba Fett – or Rex or it's Captain or Rex, but why would it be? I don't think it is. Yeah. No, because I'm, I'm saying that the general audience knows Boba Fett. Yeah. If you're going into this, you may have probably not seen the Clone Wars or any of that stuff, but you've definitely remember the, you definitely remember Temuera Morrison mm. in uh, the movies. Yeah, you and Boba seen... Fett in other things. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Maybe it's I... Jango Fett. Could be. He's in a robot body. No, he's um dead. He died. Remember? He dead. Yeah, I know. But then again, maybe he yeah. survived that explosion. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. Did they... Maybe he was on a. Maybe he survived. Uh... The explosion of his head leaving his body. <laughs> that is. He was. His head was on a lightsaber wave. <laughs> yeah. Safest place to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like. Do you think landed that... in the arms of a buxom nurse? It may... <laughs> saved his life. Put him in a robot body. Do you think the no hair eyebrows thing is from the sarlacc? Like the acid? Yeah, oh, yeah, the acid did it. Yeah. yeah, I didn't notice he had no eyebrows. Uh, maybe he did, but it seemed okay. to me like. Um, yeah, he didn't. Um, yeah, I, I. What is he still doing there? Because it's been like five. Maybe he has years. sarlacc lice, so he had to shave it yeah, off. Good, that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also we've done a Boba Fett comic before. In um, it's a caravan of garbage where he comes back. They get him. They find him. Yeah, right. And then he ends up back in the sun. Oh yeah, again. that's true. Oh no, back to the status quo for me. Yeah, yeah. It's a shame this wasn't canonical. Ah. That's right. But uh, it's it, like, what is he doing? That's true because presumably, if he is as skilled as all the expanded universe media tells us, <laughs> yeah, and therefore more skilled than he's been in the movies, yeah, uh, he would. If he wanted to get off that darn rock that is Tatooine, he would have done it by he could now. Have done it, yeah. Right? So why is he still there? I don't Does know. he want the armor back? But if so, why would he get it from Cobb? Why would he yeah, get it from Corb fan? For f- he could have figured that out because he brought that armor like around the time that the Death Star blew up. Yeah, right. So that's. He's probably been doing that for five years. But then yeah. again, it's this town that nobody knows about. And yeah. So maybe he didn't know he was there. I mean, may, well, that's true. I mean, maybe he maybe he was on ta- he's on Tatooine. Mm. He encountered the Mandalorian. Yeah. And then he followed the Mandalorian to yes. Corp Vampirfuf. Yeah. And then, then he, he was could like, be dressed as a – he could be like disguised as a sand person as yeah. well. Like and he's got another suit of armor that's even cooler. Mm. It's got double rocket launchers on the wow. back. He could kill two coins at once. He'd kill himself. <laughs> he would. <laughs> I'm saying just conceivably he could. One's pointing man, up and I'm, one's pointing down. Yeah. <laughs> and he just fires them at once. Yeah. Well, they're both pointing down. Yeah. One's pointing out and one's pointing directly at his head. Yeah, exactly. And no, one's he, on his front and it's just yeah. right under his chin. chin yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And he's just, he does a lot of threats like, well, you could, but I could kill us both right now. And they're like, go ahead then. <laughs> yeah. Why would I? Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, but uh, I loved it. I love the callbacks. Yeah. It might be Anakin's pod racer engine. Oh, the Cobb Van It could be. Yeah, it's been okay. modified. Right. That also might be Anakin's speeder that he uses in episode two. Oh, or it could be just another mm. model of speeder. Could be another model of speeder. There's if, a... if Do you ever see a, a car drive past and you're like, is that my car? It's like, no, it's just the same model of cars. As you, I know, as you, but James. the speeders are pretty personalised is what uh, I'm okay, saying. Right. I'm not saying They're it like is. hot rods in the 50s. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and also he, he sets off the jetpack like... Um, that's oh, like how this. Boba Fett dies. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. He sets it off, but just the two of them jetpacking around and working right. together. I'm like, this is rad, man. I'm loving this. Yeah. It felt like Jaws. 
Like it had oh, that yeah, kind I of vibe to yeah, it, yeah. you know. And it, well, yeah, it started out as kind of a western, and yeah. it's like, how's this gonna roll and out? And it was then... not like because I remember the first episode last time was like thirty-eight minutes or something, and this uh-huh. was like fifty-four minutes, and it felt like yeah. a real arc. And yeah, yeah. and I know it's like a side story, and it probably doesn't matter. It probably does later because Boba Fett's back and whatever, and he yeah. meets people. But it felt like a really cool bottle episode. Like yeah. I could have seen this like outside of. Any of the other series, and I think I would have enjoyed it just as much. Yes. I mean, I would have had questions to be sure. but That's uh, true. It mostly would have been eyebrow related. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's great. A great yeah. start. And Get into it, I I think say. they're all about this length. Nice. The episodes, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. Amy Sedaris, I'm like. Oh, you can take her a lever? Uh, it's not, I love her. I think she's yeah. great, but it, it feels like, oh, what are you doing back in these parts? Blah, blah, blah. It just feels <laughs> right. like the dialogue is bad. Uh-huh. It just doesn't feel. No, I Feel understand. Like yeah, works, yeah, yeah, I, I get you. Mm. Um, but it's Star Wars. It's all a bit. It's all a bit much, isn't it? So it's I all really a bit complain. much, isn't it? You're absolutely right. And of course, um, would you have, would you have rather replaced her with Werner Herzog? He's there no, instead. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't replace her. Okay, yeah. Uh, he he's taken a, a a whole different direction. He's Werner Herzoging it, isn't he? Yeah, he really is. Yeah. yeah. How does he choose his roles? Is my question. I don't know if he does. How does he? I mean, I presumably. Maybe he's friends with John Favreau, and Favreau was like, "Do you want to? Do you want to be in this?" And he's like, "Yo." Maybe he's not. Yes. We don't know. Maybe maybe he's just there, and he refused he's, to he leave. He's just there. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Read this, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Now, Mason, we're talking uh, the Mandalorian, and this leads very snugly into our topic for this week, which okay. is weirdest and worst, more weird than worst. Okay. Now, there's some bad ones in here. Uh, Star Wars characters. And I say the Mandalorian because we a- again get the appearance of R five D four. Okay, so he's not just an R five droid. He's the R five D four. Because you can see he's even got the hole in his head. Where Explain. It exploded. Oh, so he's the so. Oh, we're going to go through some Star Wars characters. Okay, great. So to refresh my memory, R five D four is the droid that Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru were going to buy. Yes. Before his head exploded. Yep. And then instead they bought R two D two, which sets off the events of the original trilogy. Correct. But R five D four in an expanded universe book, I think. Yep. Was force sensitive. And he knew that R two D two had to end up with yes. Aunt, he got Aunt, a vision of the future. Yeah, Aunt, Uncle and Aunt Beru, and so he blew himself up. Right. Yes. He it's, committed droid suicide. It's so. a non canonical story where he is a droid with the force, mm-hmm. and I think Obi Wan can sense him and other things going on, mm-hmm. and he and he knows that there's big things at play. Yes. Greater things than himself, uh-huh. and he explodes. I think it was also a non-canonical story in Legends as well. Okay, right. But then the comic concludes because it's just like an eight-page thing. Yeah. It concludes, this is over and I wasted your time. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a blue he's a blue droid ghost. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, wow. but if you want to know, uh, uh, he's called Skippy. That was his non-canonical name. Okay. But if you want to know the, the version now yes. that what exists. Uh-huh. There's a book called... Uh, so this a, guy has two origins. Yeah. This one droid has two origins. Yeah. Okay. There's a book called uh, From a Certain Point of View, and oh, there's yes. a new one coming out for Empire, but essentially it tells the story of A New Hope from all minor characters' points of view. And okay. it goes like... It kind goes, of gets his hand lopped off? Maybe. The devil. The de- We can talk about the devil. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, later. But... um, Or now... He's I the devil. Mind. He's a really horrible man, and he eventually gets come up, and so I think he gets murdered. Or something. Okay, so he's yeah. a devilish kind of guy. Yeah, it's not. He's not a misunderstood kind of. No, guy. No, he sucks. Oh, that's a shame. So this book, so yes. it, it 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 tells the the events of Star Wars, yes. but from minor perspectives. But it tells it in order. Okay. So it's like Obi Wan has a little meeting with Qui Gon before the story kind of begins. Okay. And they have ghost Qui Gon. They have a de- yeah. They have a dalliance. Okay. Etc. And it just goes through <laughs> yes. different characters. But he gets one, and essentially R2's like, I need to be selected by this family for this mission. I can't stay on this Jawa sandcrawler because I have important documents. Okay. Kill yourself. Okay. And he does. Wow. So he talks him into it. Wow. I and mean, obviously he comes. He talks another droid into suicide. Wow. <laughs> yes. So wow. That's, uh, that's the I think R2-D2 story. might be worse than the devil, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. But he comes back, doesn't he? I guess he does, yeah. 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 But they're all like, this guy sucks. Even though he made a massive sacrifice. Yeah. For he essentially saved the galaxy. He did, it's true. This guy. I guess cares. every minor character in that book saved the galaxy in that's some right. way. That's right. Yeah. 
Or tried to ruin it? Porkins? Does he get a? Is he get a look in? I, d- I haven't read the whole thing, okay. but maybe. Do you want to talk about Porkins though? Maybe. There's some fascinating stories behind Jack Porkins. Uh, mostly I behind mean, the scenes stuff. Mostly, no, mostly his first name. Yeah, that's true. He also he has. I know in uh, Legends he's got like a maneuver that he's famous for. The and Porkins this, maneuver. The Porkins maneuver. But there is <laughs> the Paul's Porkins. <laughs> <laughs> the pulled Porkins roll. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> just into didn't the save him though, did it? Is he dead? <laughs> no, I, just, I can't remember. He exploded. Yeah. No, they all died, most of them, except for Wedge. <laughs> and maybe some others. But yeah, just Porkins rolls into the side of the Death Star. <laughs> just straight into it. Normally I don't care what happens to these episodes, but if this if this one goes, I just want to know that pulled Porkins roll is saved. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so... It says because of his uh, rotund physique, Porkins was playfully named Piggy and Bally Runner. Uh, there's also a fun little vacation comic with him and Biggs, okay. which is canonical. Porkins goes tropical. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. They <laughs> wow. go to a beach and they have a fun beach vacation. Wow. But the actor, and- would you would you um, would you watch um, Dark Lighter and? Hawkins, yes. detected, private detectives. Definitely, Mason. Okay. They're on Tatooine. Yeah, whatever. Okay, It doesn't good. matter. All right. It's mostly the sand people. They're like, it's the sand. They've murdered Actually, people Piggy again. and Dark Lighter is a better name. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so William Hootkins, who plays him. <laughs> Excuse me? That's the name of the guy. He, he's in Batman. Hootkins plays Hootkins. Yeah, he's, he's in Batman 89. Oh, yeah. He's also in, is he, he's um, in Raiders. Is he the, is he the, the corrupt behind, cop? Yeah, he's one of them. Or he, and he's standing behind... Uh, Billy Dee Williams at one point, okay, maybe. Right, I can't right, right. remember. But he's definitely in it. Yes. I can picture him in a 1930s-esque yeah, yeah, fedora yeah. or whatever. But he was originally considered as the stand-in for Jabba the Hutt because, of course, there is that deleted scene where yeah, right. Han speaks with Jabba. That didn't, he ended up passing on that role, so, but he came back to play one of the rebel pilots. And he thought that his role uh, would involve heavy makeup and they'd dress him up like a pig because of the name. Uh-huh. And he spoke to George Lucas about that and he's like, Scott Porkins, is he a, like a pig man? And George Lucas is like, no. Just a regular his man. His name is Porkins yep. and you are Porkins. And then the rebel pilot uniform that he was in, that there was only one size, so they had to split the back of the costume so he'd fit in it properly. Oh, dear. And it says that uh, uh, slightly exposing his Mr. Natural T-shirt underneath. Okay. In the 1960s yeah, yeah. Uh, comic strip, which I, I'd never heard of. But also, Hootkins initially thought the actors playing the Death Star crew members had better roles, but would later consider himself lucky to be play, to play one of the most, film's most iconic heroes, which I would 100% agree with. Yeah. Because who do you remember? Like the Death Star guys in the helmets, they're all like completely interchangeable. Exactly, that's right. But this guy, he's like one of the few rebel pilots that you actually remember. Stay our targets. So, yeah. <laughs> They are targets. Do you know what I mean? Yes. He stands out. And, and I think that's awesome. he stays awesome. on target. He does until yeah. he explodes. He does the Porkins right. roll and explodes. <laughs> uh, but pull Porkins roll, sorry. Yeah. He's pulled the Porkins roll. So there you go. Do you have any or can I just no, jump to just, just keep go? going, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you familiar with El- Elan Sleesbagano? <laughs> I've heard the name, but I can't remember where he's com- he comes from. Okay. He's the tri- guy who tries to sell Obi-Wan death sticks. He's a drug dealer oh, okay, right, in right, episode right. two. There we go. That's what it is. There's okay. not much on him. Yes. Uh, but it, uh, we do know that in the Imperial era. That's Sle- pretty rare that there's no ex- a rich backstory I for know, any right? minor character. Sleaze Bagano, now with a child of his own, passed by a conversation between Leia Organa and Forza on Coruscant. So that's... So I guess he did go home and reassess his life or he's a drug dealer and he has a child. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. But yeah. Both could be true. But the Wikipedia is very short and it's oh, just oh. like he's weak-willed and then he went home and he thought about his actions because mm. he was just going bar to bar selling cigarettes. And he's changed his name to Upstanding Citizen Iano. Yes, that's right. So that's pretty good. Now we've talked about Lobos. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you need to know any more about Lobos? He's got a robot. He's got robot things in his brain and then they got into his brain and now they he's a robot man. They him and now yeah, he's yeah, a robot yeah, man. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. But forget that. Don't worry about it. What about this? Do you know Major Bren Derlin, who you might not know, but uh, he's in Empire Strikes Back, but it's, okay. it's John Ratzenberg oh, from Cheers. Right. Yeah, he's yeah, in for Empire sure. Strikes Back. Yeah. I don't really have any facts about that. I just uh-huh. think it's amazing that he's... What's his character's name again? Uh, Major Bren Derlin. And he's in the Emperor or Empire? He's in yeah, the... he's, in, he's on Hoth and he's like, we've got to do a thing or whatever. And he's got his big moustache. Do you and... think when he, when he goes into the facility, people are like, Bren Derlin! <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets that reference anymore. And Mason. then he sits down in his regular spot at the bar. Yeah, that's of right. The emperor's something. Yes, <laughs> thing. <laughs> Used up all your juice on. Cheers. Paul Porkins rolls. Yes, absolutely. There's a Cheers franchise inside the Death Star. <laughs> 
Now, you're probably not going to be... I'm flying through these. You're okay with that? Yes. You're probably not going to be uh, surprised by this, but my brother, the one you don't like, had a number of suggestions. Of course he did. And I bet they're all uninteresting. No, there's some good ones, oh, man. all right. I think most of them have made it in. Okay. Uh, this is for, this is Mount Sorrow. It's from a 1980s Ewok comic. Okay. So this was a mountain on the forest moon of Endor, and I, if, I'd invite you to Google it to see a picture. What's it called again, sorry? Mount Sorrow. Just type in Mount Sorrow Star Wars. The okay. tip of the mountain was in fact sentient and had the power to both blow people off the summit or cry tears of healing. Wow. So if you have a look, it's, okay. it's just a it's a big cartoon crying mountain. It is a big cartoon <laughs> crying mountain. It is. It's true. <laughs> He's saying, why do you seek my tears to an Ewok? And the Ewok's like, whoa. Healing, obviously. Yeah, that's healing. why we're here. Or the other but, thing. Blow, yeah. I want to be blown off the mountain, please. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Legends fact number 15 It says here This is one of the, This is in Google Image Search yep. Mount Sorrow was a clinically depressed mountain who, was, who cries healing tears First appearing in the seventh issue Of the Ewoks comic in 1986 The world at large was content To forget about Mount Sorrow Until its entry into in 2008's Complete Star Wars encyclopedia There you go And then for another 12 years Until this podcast right now <laughs> Thank you my brother Right yeah. Mason Thanks to him We'll see how the rest of them go. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is my favourite fact, and it's nothing we um, we haven't learnt already, but it's just something somebody put in on the Wikipedia. Despite being a mountain, Sorrow was in constant state in a constant state of depression. Yep. So you know. <laughs> wow. There you go. Wow. God, Star Wars is weird, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to talk about Kit Fisto? Of course, I want to talk Even about Even if Kit it's briefly, Fisto. yeah. Uh, Kit Fisto, for those who don't know, he's like a fish man. He's got fish tentacles. Uh, if you've seen the Clone Wars animated series from 2003, he's got a great episode where he does some underwater fighting. Yeah, people, he's basically Aquaman. People will recognize him from the the big the big uh, the big Jedi fight in the fighting arena in Episode Two. Right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, and right. he is the uh, is the third Jedi to be killed by Palpatine in that duel. Is he he's, wildly buff in something? He's wild like he's yeah underwater. He's wildly yeah, buff. But you, go, yeah. you mostly see him in robes. Yeah. But he kills – Palpatine immediately kills two others. Yep. And then Kit Fisto survives a few more seconds and then it's down to him and Mace Windu. You're right. Which is crazy because according to all the Wikipedia sources, he was regarded by fellow Jedi Master Mace Windu as one of the greatest lightsaber duelists in, in the Jedi Council. Yeah, okay. Mm. Uh, it says, <laughs> well, well, Emperor Palpatine was better, all right? Yeah, that's right. It also says lethal underwater as well as land. But if we had to guess – He's probably better shirtless underwater than he is in a big heavy robe. Yep, that's having a true. screaming yeah. Sith <laughs> lunging yeah. at him. So. I mean, you know, how is is a fish better at swimming in the water or you put a trench coat on it <laughs> and have it flap around in a hotel foyer? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's very true. Um, in Legends, and a lot of these are from Legends. Yes. IG88, uh, he's, there's a bunch of them. Mm. There's like A, B, C, D and yeah, yeah. various other incarnations mm-hmm. that he makes. But... IG-88 is, an, is a – I think they make him as an assassin droid. Right. One of them goes rogue, yes. kills everybody there, and then copies himself into the four other bodies. Okay, And sure. they're made of like Durasteel and they're indestructible and they're super smart and whatever. So there's basically in, – in the time of – this is in – and a lot of these are taken from these books from like Tales from Moss Eisley's Cantina, Tales from mm-hmm. Bounty Hunters. You know yeah, those yeah, books right, right. yeah, yeah, right. Um, yeah, yeah. They're out in the universe doing different things. And you see, if you read that story, they show up in different versions. So one shows up in Shadows of the Empire. Oh, I see, Boba right. Fett blows him up in his ship. Do they acknowledge they are separate ones in those books? I don't know if they do that. Or does one just blow up and then you see another one in the next version? I think that's it. Okay, I think you only right. see the one in the comic. Uh, but there's also one that you see. Also, he's a... That all just ends with, and then Boba Fett destroyed him with a blaster. But you could see IG-8 had an expression on his face that was like, I've got a secret. <laughs> yes. There's more than one of me. <laughs> Bear in mind that a lot of this is off the top of my head. Yeah. But one of them is destroyed and seen in um, The Empire Strikes Back in that Ugnaught chamber. Right, okay. So one dies there. One of them is also, though, is like part of the drinks machine on Tatooine okay. it's because they're recycling parts. Oh, I he's see, a, right. He's a broom. He's not. Yeah, right. You only right. saw one of these movies. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, because they recycled the props for the actual he's movie. He's not yeah. an actual character. Yeah, right, like, right. What can we make? Uh huh. But because yeah. I wanted to pick one of the bounty hunters because from that scene, because he's really the one that stands out for yes. some reason. I'll maybe yeah. Bosk as well, but he's the one that people really remember for some yeah. reason. It's because he you couldn't conceivably fit a human being in him. Yeah, so you're that's like, right. what's that? What, what, what's he going to do? I think. Yeah. Is, when the, when that room opens, you're like, what's he going to? Is he going to move? Yeah. Because that won't look good. No, and he didn't. 
Yeah. They only managed to do it recently. But the last one of him, oh, also he, he decided to infiltrate the Empire. He made a, sto- a robot stormtrooper army that infiltrated. Oh. And then one of his last acts was getting inside the Death Star. The original or second the, the Death second Star. one, right, yeah. And he was doing things like messing with the Emperor. So, like, the Emperor <laughs> goes to open a door and he'll just, like, slam it shut and see what oh. he does. And the Emperor, like, uses the Force to open it. And, and IG-88, who doesn't kind of know what that is, is like, what is this? Like, this is interesting, this old weird old man. What's going on here? <laughs> anyway, the book ends with him. A like, couple of real odd couple, those two. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, they don't know he's in the system, that okay. he's in the Death Star. He can control the Death Star. Mm-hmm. And he's loving it. And he's like... By my calculations, this battle will be over soon and blah, blah, blah. And he explodes. Nice. Because the Death Star explodes and oh. he's in the Death Star. But that's okay. Legends. Mm. It's different. Um, pod races, Mason. There's Go a bunch on. of them. I just got a name here. It's Dud Bolt. Uh-huh. And the one I like the most is, the most is Ben Quadraneros because he looks like King Willy Wheaty. Yeah. If you remember that fella. <laughs> of course I remember <laughs> King Willy Wheaty. <laughs> so there you go. I think I, I think I looked this up recently. I think it was to make a joke on Twitter, but I I, I saw a, a great about King Willy Wheaty. No, it was about it was a, it was I, I looked up characters on Tatooine. Oh yeah, because I was going to make fun of you on Twitter. <laughs> uh, oh, it is Ben Quadranaros. Yeah, okay. it's King Willy Wheaty. Yes, yes, very good. <laughs> he's one, I think he's one that doesn't even start the race. Oh right, remember right. remember he's, like he's, his pod, his pod blows up on him. Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Oh, yeah. so but most of those are made to most of those guys are made to explode. Right. Yeah. What's the difference between Owen Lars and, and Klieg Lars? They're, it's his son. Ah. So wait, is one... Okay. Klieg Lars is the... Klieg Lars is Jack Thompson. Jack Thompson, yeah. And the father of Joel Edgerton. Oh, uh, Who became okay, right. old Owen Lars. Oh, because Klieg Lars is in like the first movie probably. Yeah, second. Okay. Uh, so he's missing a leg because of sand people and his wife got kidnapped. Right, he's like, right, I'd right, go right. after her, but okay. I won't. Okay. Yeah. Mm. If you recall Star Wars Episode 2, Mason. Yes. Eventually, does. I settled on Watto. What do you want to talk about, Watto? I guess. What do you got on Watto? I, I actually wrote it down, <laughs> then I took it out. Okay. Uh, because um, I don't know why, but okay. So he's clearly some because he's Gonzo. Yes, exactly. He's a, he's like a sinister, like yeah, Gonzo Klinger esque uh-huh. <laughs> like yep. charlatan. Uh, he ends up destitute. Okay, good. Because good. he keeps he's gambling. He's a slave on, owner. Yeah, and the, and he keeps gambling. Yeah, and he because. Well, he, well, he loses because Qui Gon's like you know if you gamble you eventually lose. But he lost because he Qui Gon cheated him. Yep. And um, so why not just kill him? Qui-Gon? Why not just kill him exactly? Which also cut his he, arms off cut like you do off. to anybody. Yeah, we've talked about this before. But when Qui Gon tries to mind trick him and he's like, it doesn't work. So he's like, well, what I'll do? I'll make a kid do it. Sure. <laughs> do a race car event. You'd be like, in for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah. I use the, how about I just crush him with this engine using the force? Exactly. So it was all these. Like other, Splatto. Exactly. Mm. So it's so he just sets these chain of events in motion because it's like, it's not the Jedi way to whatever. So, But he kills like a bunch of people inadvertently on the way, inadvertently on the way by having Anakin like compete in this race. Mm-hmm. And this series of events unfolds where he could have just held up a lightsaber and just goes, just give me the thing <laughs> yep. or I'll kill you. Give me everything I want in this room. <laughs> give me the kid. Give me the, the power motivator yeah. thingamo. But he turns up, I think, in a non-canon comic where Obi-Wan meets Darth Maul with legs. Okay. Which is the first time that he came back. Okay. And he's beheaded. I think Darth Maul's looking for Obi-Wan and he beheads him. Oh. But he probably turns up. In, he's got little stubble under his little he chin. He does, yeah. That's true. Good effect. I agree. That thing like yeah. from 99 looks good. Do you know who EV nine D nine is? No, it's the tor- she's a torture droid from she she from. Well, um, have you seen Return of the Jedi? Yes. Remember when they go down into the bowels of Jabba's palace and there's the one who goes, "You are a protocol droid, are you not?" And whatever. Oh right, okay. And he's like putting like the hot press on one of the gone okay. droids or whatever. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. She's like torturing all these people. Anyway, this is a regular droid gone bad. All the models. Oh, were- a regular torture droid. Regular, yeah. Well, they weren't supposed to be. But they were all recalled, but this one escaped. Ah, it's and like when you get a uh, car with malfunctioning airbags. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a droid that... You get in your car and you start the engine, it's like, you're going to get the hot press. And you're like, <laughs> ah, why? So this is a droid that added a third eye to itself that can see pain and okay. revels in it, in other huh. droids' pain, right? Right. So she's laying low on Cloud City and under the supervision of Lando Calrissian and Lobot, mm-hmm. he's just like torturing the droid population. Ah, what? And they don't know. But anyway, I think she eventually like tries to tip the whole station into like (laughs) into the um 
the planet or whatever. Okay, I've right. read this a long time ago, okay. so I could barely remember. Because it's a weird poison soup or something. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. But she escapes, they fix it. Okay. And so she's hiding out on Jabba's sail barge or whatever. Okay. And then she sees that Lando's there and she's like, oh, shit, uh-huh. Lando Calrissian has come to get revenge. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to deal with this. But it turns out that's just a coincidence that he happens to be there. But what does end up happening is a traffic droid from Cloud City shows up and he's like, boom, it's me, you're dead. So uh, <laughs> that's how it ends. She's, she's killed by a traffic droid. Yeah, from Bespin. Huh. So he, oh, as revenge. As revenge, yeah. so, so there is some actual revenge. Okay, There's right, actual right, revenge. Right. Okay. So there you bloody go. Mm. Um, <laughs> You're under arrest for all your airbag-related misdemeanors. <laughs> I'm a traffic droid. <laughs> that's like a, a traffic cop that's taken taken his job way too seriously. Uh, so this is another one from my brother that okay. he insisted that I read. Okay, it's Felton. See, Turn. one of these is he's going to betray you at some point here. One of these is going to be bad. This is a weird one. Uh, yeah, Felton Pern Travag and also he might have made one up. No, I'll these are real. I looked into them. Mil Yoon Onith. Okay. Uh, this is a like a weird goat creature from the Moss Eisley Cantina. Okay. It's like I just want to get laid, so <laughs> meets this other creature and yes. and the, the his workmates are like, "What are you doing? Not this. This is weird. Don't go with that creature." And he's like, "I don't have time. I'm getting laid. I love <laughs> it." And so he tells the creature yes. that this is all in the this is in the book. Okay, I can, of course. I cannot right. stress this enough. Sure. That's like I love you and let's be together. And the the woman's like, yeah, I love you too. But he's like, it's a trick. I'm going to leave in the morning. This is a one-night stand. Oh, he's going to trick her, <laughs> yeah, I see. Right. Oh, okay. But anyway. Well, I hope he gets his come up in some Well, he does because she's some kind of weird praying mantis alien and kills oh, him. Oh, nice. So, and then it, the book ends with like his friends being like, I tried to warn him, but he was just like, I just want to get laid. So. <laughs> it's that's, a real lesson for all the kids out there. <laughs> it is, isn't no, it? Don't watch out. You might get your head bit Don't off. have sex with a praying mantis. Mm-hmm, that's right. Ask first. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a, a newer one, Ooh. but I think it's worth mentioning. Go on. Uh, FN2199. Okay. It was more commonly known as TR8R, Traitor. The, uh, oh, the Stormtrooper. The Stormtrooper from Force Awakens. He's like, I'll get you, Finn. Heavily memed. So yes. the reason that they know each other is because they came up together in training. Okay. So he wasn't just like, Traitor. He was like, I know you specifically. Mm. And then they fight. And he's got that electric that stick thing. cool thing that he, yeah. remember there was like, he's memed and he's doing dances yeah, 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 and yeah, stuff. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's in all sorts of things. He's dancing to the Becca theme. <laughs> Becca and uh, his character Sam in the same universe from Cheers. We talked yes. about it, didn't we? Yeah, we did. You can edit that out, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> or leave it. Cause Why would he, fact. though? It's, it's good. It's fact. good stuff, yeah. Episode three, and we're just crushing it. That's right. The Rancor trailer is named Malachi, Malakli. Uh, oh, Malakili. Wasn't and, he's, and he's very sad because his Rancor is killed. Very sad. Yeah. So if I remember the book correctly, which I don't, uh, he's got a <laughs> love for horrible, beastly creatures. Okay, yeah. And the, the, the Rancor gets delivered mm-hmm. and he tries to befriend it. Okay. And it's a long process of um, them getting to know each other. Mm-hmm. And Jabba's like, it's just a beast who gives a fuck. Just like do your job, feed it, don't yeah. wear a shirt. That's all I need from sure. you. Sure. Right? Uh-huh. And eventually he gets the opportunity to take the Rancor out for like a run on the June Sea. This okay, is, sure. Again, from memory. So <laughs> okay, I remember this great like stuff. 25 years. Uh huh. That's right. I'm older than 25. Believe it. <laughs> but, he read this on his first birthday. <laughs> that's right. Got it for his. Got it for his birthday. So uh, they form this bond where, mm. and he's. I think his plan is to release it or something like that. Okay. And then Luke Skywalker kills it. <laughs> oh no! One day till release. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that guy's always stuck out to me because how oily he is. Oh, how oily! But like everybody loves. Everybody is loves something in the Star Wars universe. Like oh, that yeah. was his whole world. Yeah, right. That's and true. And Luke Skywalker dropped a door on it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you know, that's yeah. that's the rank. I mean, that's what you know. Are. That's that's you know. I guess the the interesting thing about these you know backstories. We've always, I've always talked about you know uh, James Bond. He's always killing all these people. But yeah. you know they've they've got backstories too. Exactly. Presumably. It's like that Austin Powers Rob Lowe thing where oh, yeah. you find that guy gets crushed mm-hmm. or whatever. Anyway. Um, this one I have no information on. I've just written question mark. But okay, Bore, let's make up a backstory. Bore for Gullet, <laughs> Bore Gullet. It's the squid monster from Rogue One that can read your memories. Oh, and it tortures your mind. Tells you it tortures your tr- brain. Whether you, yeah, it tells you ah, whether you. I don't remember what it truth. looks like. So it's squid it's monster. A squid so. and it wraps around ah, you. And, and and Forrest Whitaker's like, hey. Bore Gullet. Hey. Um, anyway, it probably died when the planet exploded. Yeah, the planet exploded, didn't it? Yeah. Maybe it caught a wave. To safety. Maybe it caught a safety wave. I don't know. That's what they call them. <laughs> 
That's what they say. You, you they know. say if your car's if your car's spinning around, turn into the skid. And if you're on a planet that's about to be destroyed by the Death Star super laser, um, grab grab yourself a light wave, You'll safety be, wave, you're baby. Be all right. Yeah. You know Jackson with two X. No. The Green Rabbit. I'm just. There's probably there's a lot of kids out there called Jackson with two X's. That's I true. Think. Uh, or One X. Yeah. It's a green rabbit from Star Wars in like a red flight jumpsuit, red and white flight oh, jumpsuit. On the you side of the rebels? Uh, yes. He's like a, it's basically it's Han Solo, but it's a six foot two green rabbit. So it's Bucky O'Hare. Yes. Huh. There's a lot of similarities there, yes. There you go. But the other thing about this guy is he uh, was introduced, at, one of the first characters to be introduced outside of the, the main continuity because uh-huh. he turned up in a Star Wars comic. And it seemed like he wasn't really loved. And the rumor was that George Lucas was like, get rid of this giant rabbit. What's the character called again? Jackson, two X's. Oh, yeah. Which is the name of your first son, presumably. Nice. Jackson Star Wars comes up right away. Yeah. Big rabbit, right? Oh, yeah. He's, um, he's Bucky O'Hare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bucky O'Hare was after, though, right? Yeah, Bucky O'Hare was like 90. Oh, Bucky O'Hare was 1984, so still, still oh, after. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, but people weren't really a big fan and he disappeared for 20 years. Okay. But. But then he, it turns out he existed. And therefore, as part of the Star Wars universe, they've got to bring him exactly. back. Exactly. And he now is canonical again. He's okay. had some canonical adventures since, yeah, right. which I did not read. There you go. There's like cool cartoon versions of him, like stylized ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then there's like this horrible <laughs> yeah, Alice, in Wonder- one. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland like painted version that is horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I wouldn't want. Imagine you wake up one night and that's standing in your bedroom. And it's got a gun. It, yeah. <laughs> he does have a gun. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah, not a fad. But anyway, mm-hmm. he's Han Solo, but he's a rabbit. Yep. And people hate him. Nice. Uh, Chairman Papanoidia. Okay. Is uh, a pizza mascot. <laughs> Do you remember the Noid? We didn't really have the Noid over here. No, we didn't. No, it's more he, something I've seen in. Yeah, he was a Domino's pizza, pizza mascot. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, only I, think, a, I think it encouraged. A, I think a man went insane from the Noid. Yeah, and he Why? was like, he thought he thought the Dominoes had specifically created the Noid to target him. To target him, and then he went. I'm going to look it up, but continue with whatever thing you're saying. I will. Uh, that's the character who's played by George Lucas, a blue skinned alien at the opera, and his daughter's in the same blue skin next to him. This is an his episode actual daughter. three. Yep. Yeah. Right. And there, that's the only time that he's appeared in a Star Wars movie. It's, huh. his, it's his one cameo. And I think it was, you know, these movies are wrapping up. I've never been in these movies. Mm. Let's do it. Let's be in it. Yeah, right. So, okay. George Lucas. There you go. Got that Noid I fact. Do. Here's the Noid fact. In 1989, a man named Kenneth Noid walked oh. around Domino's Pizza in Atlanta, Georgia, with a 357 Magnum revolver and took two hostages. After a five-hour standoff during which Noid demanded $100,000 in ransom money, the employees escaped. Uh, so Nord, Noid believed that Domino's Pizza founder Tom Monaghan had created the Avoid the Noid campaign specifically to target him, to persecute him. Wow. And they're like, he's saying for people to avoid me. It might be because he had that gun. Yeah. But I mean, who knows? So is there, could there be any chance that that is true? I don't think so, no. <laughs> okay. no. So there's no validity to this. I don't yeah. believe so, no. Wow. So did they retire the Noids shortly after? They, reti- they retired the Noid after that and the, he came back like... Uh, hang on. So, save a brief appearance in a Facebook game in 2011 to celebrate his 25th birthday. The Noid hasn't been seen since. That's right. And what happened to the guy? He's fine. He's not. No, he's definitely not. No, he's not. I hope he's okay. He's not. No, he's dead? Yeah. Oh, boo. Well, I hope he found some peace because they got rid of the Noid. Yeah, well, absolutely. So that's good. Yeah, I guess yeah, he got his right. way. Yeah. Yeah. Will Rohood. This is an interesting story. It's, it is an interesting story. Yes. Or did you say this is an interesting no, this story? This is an, an interesting story. Well, he's got, a, he's got a human first name, so that's something. Exactly. That tells me a lot. So this is a character, a very minor character okay. from Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's in one scene. Okay. He's seen grasping an ice cream maker and he rushes past the camera as Cloud City is being overtaken by the uh, Empire. So they've just handed him whatever prop yep. they had and they've gone run across the screen. Okay. And, and that, he's got a backstory. Yes. Well, that's not what's fascinating about this guy. But it's not it's an, it's canonically is. it's not an ice cream maker. No. The machine that he's holding is a... Because the machine is the same one we see in The Mandalorian that holds the best car and also holds those gems that Timothy oh, Alford yeah, right. take. That's an ice cream maker from like the, oh, yeah, the right. 70s okay. and yeah, 80s yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah. I guess it would be the 70s. Yeah. So his job. Oh, I reckon I remember now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's in one scene. Yes. Right. This dude, and he's 
you barely you blink and miss. So they've retconned something important being yes. in that thing. Okay, right. So they turn, the story behind him is that he helped. Uh, the, the Lando didn't love the Empire, as okay. mentioned. Mm-hmm. So he used to sell. He loved capes, and that's it. That's all he loved. Capes and getting laid. He loved but it, But he baby. learned a lesson from that praying, praying mantis, mantis woman. woman. Yeah. yeah, he killed her. He yeah. had to. Mm-hmm. It was her or him. But he used to sell gas to the rebels okay. cheaper, right? Yeah, right. And but uh, Will Wo Hood, but that was his job. He would he would help. One of his jobs was help liaise with the rebels. He was captured and tortured by the Empire for his job. Oh. Uh, he eventually escaped and grabbed the most important. Tortured by the torture lady robot? Uh, no, I think it's just a regular torture robot. Regular torture robot. You know the yeah. ball with the. Yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. a syringe in it or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd just kick it. But anyway. Yeah. I would simply kick the ball. I'd bloody, I'd bloody, I'd, I'd hit it like a volleyball. Spike <laughs> just it. Jump yeah. up and just fucking <laughs> hammer it, mate. Nice. But uh, so he so he, he didn't give up. He didn't he didn't give up anything when he was tortured Good by the Empire. Mm. So I his most valuable possession is probably in that ice cream maker. Maybe mm. it is ice cream. We don't really know. <laughs> But what's interesting is that every Star Wars convention, like the mainline ones and probably some minor ones, there's an event called the Running of the Wilro Hoods. Great. And it's like 50 people dressed as this dude with the ice cream makers and they just run through the convention. That's great. So it's just become this thing. That's very, that's, uh, I like that a lot. Which I really enjoy. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I've got one more from my brother. Okay. Are you uh, ready for yeah, it? Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever be ready, but all right. This is the one. If this is the one where he's going to betray us. Maybe we'll save it for the end. Oh. Because uh, let's talk about Thurm Scissor Punch. That's a good name. Uh, it's just a big crab man from Solo. It's playing cards. It's okay. got big crab hands. Nice. There's not much on it. Uh, mm-hmm. Not much on Thurm from the mm-hmm. Wikipedia. But one of the facts is likely a name given to himself. So yeah. probably, I'd do imagine. You think, do you think, that as the name suggests, do you think he's like one of those pistol shrimps? What, in terms of like, like he's got that he's powerful got some punch. Like kind of, the, the pistol shrimp has that powerful hot punch. Are you yeah. aware of that? It's got a hot, hot punch. A hot punch. Is it hot or like just like it's a hot? Movement. No, it produces like a. It's, it's so fast. Are you, you're not aware of no, it. It's, it's a sea creature. Yeah, and it produces like it can kill. It's a. It's little, but it can. It produces like a thermal blast with a with a with an attack under. So it's like a one punch man shrimp. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, so maybe that's I why. A, I think there's a YouTube channel called Pistol Shrimp, isn't it? Pistol there? Shrimp's Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, there's a maybe a fake sports team called the Pistol Shrimps. Mm. But so it's like this quick drawn shrimp. Yeah, I love that. I love that, Mason. I hope that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> what if it's made up? No, there's a real one that. Uh, oh yeah, it's got a hammer. It's pistol like. It, it has a. Uh, unlike most shrimp claws, it does not have typical pincers at the end. Rather, it has a pistol-like feature made of two parts. A joint allows the hammer part to move backwards in a right angle position. When released, it snaps into the other part of the claw, emitting an enormously powerful wave of bubbles cap- capable of stunning larger fish and breaking glass jars. Whoa! Yeah. So it's not poison. It's just like a big punch. No, it's like a thermal, like it, underwater, yeah. it, like, it's, a, it's a hot punch. That's like crazy. I, say. I love right? that, Mason. I yeah. wish that was a Star Wars character. It is! Thumb scissor punch! Oh, this yeah. was, oh you know what? Mm. Um, Jamie Foxx's character in in Project Power. That's his power. Ah. He's got the thermal punch. Okay. He's got pistol shrimp DNA or whatever. I didn't know that. Yeah. In his body. Do they say that in it? Are they like, he's just. I think so, yeah. He's just like that YouTube channel and. (laughs) That's that's right. That fake sports team. Fake sports team, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Second last one Yaddle. Yoda's wife. No. Or Lady Yoda. Lady Yoda. Okay. We don't really know. We know Yaddle is a. Is a very formidable Jedi, about half the Do age we? of yeah, 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 okay. half the age of Yoda. Okay, but Yaddle, who looks like Yoda in a wig, yes, uh, began as a young Yoda design sketch. Oh, and if so you look, like sexy young seventies hair. Yeah, but if you look at like the sketch, it doesn't really look like Yaddle at all. Okay, but I think they looks just, like George Lucas in flowing amazing <laughs> hair. <laughs> George Lucas does have flowing amazing. I hair. I know, but it's um. It's just Yoda in a wig. Yeah, I know. That's I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen the pictures. Yeah, so I, it feels like um, they just made two Yoda puppets and they went, we just need. <laughs> and they rested a wig on one momentarily and they're like, wait a minute. Yeah, exactly. This is a terrible idea, but let's give it a backstory anyway. Yeah, so she was replaced on the Jedi Council by Kai Adimundi, who's the guy with the big long cone head. Okay, yeah, I think yeah, she yeah. must have been killed in Order sixty six. Damn! But she comes back in like a weird vision, and Darth Vader like cuts her in half. But it's not wow. real because she's already dead or something. You can't kill me, Darth Vader. It's me, Yaddle. Who? Yaddle. I know. I was a kid when I met you, and then you left the council. He'd say. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Uh, here's the last one it's okay. from my brother Mason. Mm-hmm. It's Kadar Mubat. Okay. Uh, essentially, 
Kadar Mabat. Yes. <laughs> pronounced exactly like that. It's a bad name for starters, so good good job, your brother. Then you'll love this. Okay. It's a big spider mm-hmm. that lives in a big web um, with that's got all sorts of like ship weaponry on it that okay. floats through space. Okay. Which acts as a uh, – it basically f- facilitates bounties – through the Bounty Hunters Guild okay. in this big spider web ball that floats through space that it lives in. <laughs> okay. And it's sentient and it's like six foot tall or whatever. Uh-huh. And when you get inside the web, it's like a big inter- interconnected unit. Okay. So it's all like whenever, wherever you are in the web, it can see you. It's all like it's like okay. the fucking tree from Avatar but webs. Yeah, you right, know right. What I mean? yeah, I know what you got to get. Anyway, but essentially the way my brother put it, uh, it ensures prompt uh, payments of bounties collected by the members of the Bounty Hunters Guild. So essentially it's like an accountant. It's a, sure, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a spider accountant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. What do you think of that, Mason? Good I one. love it. And that means you love my brother. No. The one you traditionally hate. No, I hate him. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Okay, right. So, yeah, you happy with that? Accounting spider? Yeah, great accounting spider. The perfect <laughs> perfect finale. Does accounting spider also hand out those weird bounty hunter tracking devices where it's like, I need to track down this thing. Boop. Here yeah, it, there is. it is. How does it, how does how it does know it where it is? Don't know. Don't know. Magic web, I guess. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I was going to say, if you know any weird characters. You know any weirder ones than that? Yeah. Let us know. Tell us the backstory in one sentence. One tweet. you got to thrill us. Yeah. you got to thrill us with these dumb characters. And uh, maybe I'll get my brother to start a Twitter account. Yes. And say whether they're good or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's pretty good, yeah. What do you think? Oh, you could do it. Yeah. Or we get your other brother to do it. He'd do it too. Yeah. We get both my brothers on board. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, do you know what it's time for? It's time for what we're eating. What are we going to read? I'm doing the thing. What are we, Westworld, today? <laughs> Getting bolder, Mason. Very, very bold. <laughs> Very bold. So we are in the what we're reading section of the show where basically we tell people what we've been reading or watching yes. or doing outside of what the things we've talked about. That's right. Do you James, want me to go first? I, I want to go I first. Asked, do you, I asked if you want me to go first. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I'm telling you, no. <laughs> I implied it, but you wouldn't take that for an answer, would you? I wouldn't. No, so I'm telling you no. I apologise. I read the first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last So Ronin. did I. I thought it was fine. I liked it a lot. Okay, right. Interesting. Um, weird future or whatever. Yeah. Should we spoil it? We momentarily. Let's talk about it. So, so yep. for people who don't know, it's set. Um, I ordered this like two months ago on the show and I'm like, yeah. every week I'm like, is this the week? It is. Ah, it is God the week. It, so, week we, it uh, so it's uh, set in uh, the future of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Agreed. Uh, and uh, it's a somewhat post-apocalyptic future. Agreed. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a dystopia definitely for mm. sure. And uh, and all the turtles are dead except except one turtle is still alive, yeah. and and he wa- he has to get he has to go from a wasteland or sneak- she. All right, uh, it's a it's a guy. It might be Venus de Milo. You're right. It's not, but okay. it could be. It could not. be. It has to go from like a apocalyptic wasteland to the big cyberpunk future city Correct. to get revenge uh, on behalf Shredder's of on, beha- grand on behalf son. of all the turtles that have died in the past. It's in the main continuity sort of, I guess. I well, mean, it's, it's probably it, an elsewhere. Well, it is story. the return of Kevin Eastman, Eastman and, and Peter Laird, Laird yeah. and actually doing both working together on writing duties along with another guy whose name I There's cannot remember. There's another guy in it. There's the third guy involved. Yeah. 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 And, um, what did you like about it then? I, I like the thought, art. I thought it was I like good. the art. I yeah. thought, look, I But the mystery, as, we, as we've as yes. we established, he's not wearing, he's wearing a black bandana instead yep. of his regular color And he's band. haunted by the turtles, the other three turtles. Yeah, or is he? Maybe he's just imagining them. Oh, no, he's imagining them, definitely. Okay. I think. But, <laughs> but he carries all the turtle he carries weapons, all so you know weapons, who it is. So you don't know which one he is and yeah. some of the weapons are not working. I like the art, certainly. I like the art. I think they could have done without the It's the Future jit. I think it yeah, could maybe that's like, what's maybe that's what's throwing yeah. me. Like maybe if it, if it was like if this is like a big hit, I and may, let's say they were like it's set in 2021 and the turtles died last year. Yeah, that would be fine, and I would probably enjoy that more. But then people would be like, well, that doesn't leave a lot of room to put in more Ninja Turtle stories in the intervening time when they are alive. Yeah, fair so point. I guess they had to be like it's the future and far future. So now when they're like, now let's do some yeah. more popular stories when the turtles are all alive. They've got plenty of room. And in this continuity, and I'm completely out of the loop on turtles. Yes. Um, but Shredder, the original Shredder is dead. As yes. what happened in the first comic, presumably. Yep. Uh-huh. He has a daughter. Yep. She's in the, Karai. the animated movie. Yes. As well, who yeah, yeah. presumably is also dead or Yes, something. it seems that. And she has a son who's the new Shredder. 
Wait, no, his mother, crime his mother's still alive, I think. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. She's a, a suspended animation. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And um, presumably he's going to shred her up at some point. Yeah, right. But this turtle is coming for revenge, yeah, yes. essentially, and he's, he's making his way through the city, but it's all high tech and like... Stealing a lot of motorcycles. Got a lot of motorcycles <laughs> and, you know, there's gang members and maybe Casey Jones's daughter maybe. It's, yeah, she's a, well, that's the thing. She's got the, she's got the most common name of all, but she's definitely like Jones. That's yeah, me. So that's it's Katie, me. Casey Jones's daughter for sure. Uh, do you want to spoil who it is? Yes, spoiler alert for this. For this. Skip ahead time I think it's pretty solid. I think it's pretty solid. It's a yeah. good first issue. It it's long bit, as well. Yeah, it fe- I, I don't know. It. it felt a bit, I think, it, I think you're right. I think it's the future scenario is a little... Yeah, unnecessary for me. But again, the the turtles have gone through all sorts of different times and dimensions and planets Sometimes and all sorts of stuff. Sometimes they're robots and stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anyway, spoiler alert for this: the turtle in question is yep. Michelangelo, as we suspected. We did suspect. Like he's the number one part. It's not going to be Raphael. It's not going to be Leonardo. It's not yeah. going to be Leonardo. Donatello's too much of a nerd to yeah. seek revenge. He's probably too busy on his PS twelve. Probably. Are they going to say PS Vita? Oh, he yeah, would. He'd be yeah. like, actually, this is yeah, an excellent yeah. console. This was the peak of consoles, you actually. Yeah. You can play ports of previous That's right. Yeah, you put on your I've got all the Metal Gear games. I'm on watching this. Hellboy and UMD. <laughs> no, no, mate. It's the Vita. Oh, okay, right. Anyway. But he would watch Hellboy on UMD. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Um, uh, but anyway, yeah. So it's And the, April's alive. Yeah, or that's a hallucination. I think Maybe she's alive. Maybe that's a dream. Okay, right. But I don't know. Yeah. But I know I like the. Number one party dude is Michael. I like the mystery of it. I like how you see that. Because from. Some of the continuities, and I'm probably wrong because there's bigger <laughs> fans in this than me, but Michelangelo is like the most naturally gifted, but he does, he's not that, um, or in You're the not past, committed. He, yeah, he's not that committed to it. He's just, he's a bit of a goofball, but he's yeah. like, and I think you see a bit of that in his kind of fuck ups in this, do you know what I mean? But you yeah, see how right. he's improved and he's more serious, and mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? It's, um, I, I, I really it. enjoyed it, okay, even though you did not enjoy it as much as me. I'm not yes. going to let that detract from no, don't let it, don't let any of my opinions detract. Do you think this was, uh, like, because. We, you know, you were looking forward to it so much. Do you think that might have factored into you? Not oh, I mean, I wasn't looking forward to it that much. I, th- I was. Okay. Every week, Mason, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, is this the way? Yeah. Fucking- also, did you know, mm. issue number one has 71 alternate covers. That's too many. And if you look, if you go That's to the- more pages than are in the comic. If you go to the back page, it says, collect all of them. Why? <laughs> <laughs> it's madness. I think it's not. Maybe it's not seventy-one, but it is like in the double digits. If it's digits. more than ten, it's too many. Oh, uh, hang on. If it's more than three, it's too many. Uh, seventy-one covers. Oh my! Seventy-one goodness. alternate covers. That's too and many. And counting, it says. And counting. Yeah. Maybe they mean next issue, but yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, they're good-looking covers, and yeah, I, guess I agree. You could, but I mean. How it's is it one of those things where like if they buy ten versions, then the the distributor gets the the bonus ish. Like some are rare and some are not rare. I don't know. Yeah, couldn't get that. No thanks. Yeah. Did you get a, a digital copy? I did get a digital copy. Very good. Okay. Also, right. presumably, if you get the digital copy, you get every cover. I didn't check, but I seventy-one imagine you, extra pages. Uh, yes, yeah, bonus pages. I didn't. I didn't have a look to be yeah. honest. Anyway, I think there's five issues. Maybe. Yeah. So they're kind of be coming back, and I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Should we move on to the next segment of oh, the show? You, I'm trying to think of anything else I've read this week, but mm. uh, I don't know. I definitely have. Uh, three Jokers, but I might come back to that I next finished week. That. No, I haven't finished that. I will compile There's some. only three issues of that, right? Is yes, that... I'll compile some thoughts. and uh, I do have mm. thoughts, but I'd like to uh, maybe give it a reread. Okay, nice. All right, let's, let's do letters then. Let's do it. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a take away. I'm going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. Don't have to worry about the letters being a day away because they're here right goddamn now. If you do want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter or send a Gmail over to weeklyplanetpod at yes. gmail.com. An internet Gmail. How and if you that? send it from an Outlook account, we don't, no dice. what are you doing? What I mean, come on. Shut that account down. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Remember how the Hotmail have transitioned into Outlook like anybody wants that. Mm. Every now and then I have to get into a, like an old Hotmail account. You've got to go through Outlook and it asks me all these questions. And I'm like, verify it's you, please. Are you sure? And I'm like, dude, you should be fucking happy I'm here. Like don't be throwing <laughs> questions at me, all right? Yeah, right. Yeah, anyway, go mm. on. Okay, this is from Alex Clark. Hello, says, Alex. Weekly Planet is ruining my degree, but thank you. You're welcome. Hey, James and May. So just writing in to say thank you and oh no about your influence on my degree work at the moment. I've always listened to the podcast right from the first episode. And it's been great to unwind to. However, after your last two recommendations of Auntie Donna, I decided to give them a go and since then have watched every single video on their channel. I knew it. And therefore have not been working. Sure, I've got nothing to do right now, but all the same, thank you and boo. Yeah. 
Uh, of course, I'm still going to listen to the pod. I'm sure I have time for both. And can I ask to be the official student podcast representative? Absolutely, you may. But get back to work, mate. Get back to bloody work. Get back to work, mate. Get, get, but, but, I mean, What's he studying? I mean, uh, this is his degree. Doesn't want to tell us. Mm. Mm. Something really good, no doubt. Yeah, I'd say so probably because he so. wants to surprise us later. Be like, I appreciate that. It's going to be really good. It's going to yeah. be great. I can't wait to hear about it. And if, if you're going to be our student representative, um, get get hamburgers in the cafeteria. We all insist. I don't think they'd be very good though. Good hamburgers. Oh yeah. Specify good hamburgers. Get those ones if you're going to yeah, get yeah, one. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. This is from X Zero X Lucas Mason. Question for hashtag Weekly Planet Pod: If you guys could travel in time uh, to save an actor's life. Accidents and whatnot, okay. uh, in brackets. Yeah. Which one would you choose and change the film industry forever? Cheers from Brazil. Oh. Would you be saving? Would you like to, like a River Phoenix? Like River Phoenix, you can come back. Oh. You can do the young Indiana Jones TV show instead of Sean Patrick Flannery. You can kill his career before it even starts. Wow. Is that what you want? But then he'd never do Boondock Saints. Well, River Phoenix would do it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he'd never wow. be in some of one of the seasons wow. of Dexter. Maybe. Right now, we'd we'd be in the uh, Boondock Saints cinematic universe. We'd, every week, we'd be talking about the the yeah. the, the BS uh, CU. Absolutely, Biscu. I I um this, this podcast would be called Biscu Talk. Biscu Talk. Yes, I think the Biscu Boys. Biscu Boys. We'd be the Biscu Boys. Okay, episode one this week. It's <laughs> we the Biscu Boys. Biscu Boys. <laughs> We're changing it again. Reboot. Yeah. Um. Heath Ledger would be great, mm-hmm. obviously also because he has a daughter and he died young. Yes. But also third Batman with the Joker oh, would have yeah, been nice. Yeah, that's true. That would have been really good, yeah. I yeah. mean, Bane was all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. What about oh. you? Philip Seymour Hoffman, he could finish that Hunger Games movie. That's true, he could, but yeah. But also he could make good movies too. John Belushi and other Blues Brothers. Yeah. Would be nice. Um, Wasn't he horrible? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't bring – I mean, everybody's got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, qualities right. that are not great. Who's dead, James? Who's de- well, mate, so many people. Who's dead and ripe for a comeback? What about a Chris yeah. Farley? No. I'm talking dead com- – no? I'm not against him, but I mean, you know. You hate him, obviously. Yeah, I hate him. I hate his, yeah, I hate his okay. guts. Are you Googling dead actors? Just, I, that's literally what I well, – um, Give me some options and I'll say no. I'll say rather they – I'll say bring him back or rather they stay dead. I'm going to put recent dead actors. Okay, right. That would be um, – Yep. Carrie oh, Fisher? Do I, yeah, that would be nice. I mean, she just seems like a very interesting person as well yeah. in addition to being a good actor. Irfan Khan, who um, is a great Indian actor, but he's, he's the new John Hammond in Jurassic World. Oh, yeah, that's right. I like him as an actor. Mm. Uh, Rip Torn, you're bringing him back? Maybe, yeah. He could rob another bank or whatever he did. Yeah, whatever he did. Um, who knows what he'd be robbing right Michael now? Michael Clark Duncan. Mm. Okay, I've figured it out. Okay. It's, it's, I, don't, oh, I was about to say, it's out of these two. Okay. It's obviously <laughs> not. Um, Robin Williams, yep. Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, 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 Chadwick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I didn't really mean you have to choose, but I no, also I choose Chadwick yeah. Boseman. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was that one. That one. That one really stuck. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, yeah. that's got a, that surprised so many people. Yeah, yeah. So mm, you know, yeah. yeah, Chadwick Boseman. I would say if I had yeah. to choose. Also, because it's recent, you're not messing up with the timeline too much, are you? That's true. Oh, we're messing up timelines as well. Oh, we would, wouldn't we? I guess. Oh, we Bill would. Paxton. Oh man. Yes. John Ritter. Mm. There's some good ones here. That's right. I say, look at Kirk Douglas's dad. What's his name? Old Douglas. Do you mean Michael Douglas? Michael Douglas is yeah, he's Kirk, Kirk Douglas. Douglas yeah. yeah, but I'm like, yeah, he's a million years old. Mm. I mean, you know, I like him, but ah, uh, Anton Yelchin. Yeah. I hate this. What am I right? doing? It's bad, this is awful. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just making me sad. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'll bring them back. I can't. What am I doing? If you look down there, there's a follow up tweet under the question that was like, this is just to make you sad. <laughs> What's next? Uh, this is from uh, Runa Leo. Here we go. It says, Meso's tax thingy. Remember to write Milan off on your tax return, Nicholas. <laughs> I did my taxes yesterday <laughs> and I forgot. So and it's in? You submitted it's it? It's in. I've submitted it and I forgot. <laughs> I should have said, would, would have saved me 10% of 30 bucks or whatever I, whatever I would have gotten. Three bucks. Yes, you could get a bucks. cafeteria hamburger at a university. That's very true. Ah, it would have been a good one these their days. Their prices are exorbitant. Mm. Oh, that's no good. You got another one? Yeah, I got, I got a few. I got a couple more. Uh, this is from Bethany Drager. She says, my parents also 100% told me it was illegal to keep your light on in the interior light on the car. Parents be lying, Bethany. Definitely thought that was the case long after I got my driver's license and well into my adult years. <laughs> I'm in the US, so there must be a universal lies for parents manual they hand out at all hospitals. I reckon there would be. Yeah, I think so too. I do find myself sometimes saying like, or going to say lies that I was told. Mm. And then I like stop myself and I'm like, I'm just going to say the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Like Maybe every, too much truth. Every day I remind my kids I'm going to die. 
I'm like, I'm going to die. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, die. yeah. Could be. And they're both like, good. <laughs> Even the mother can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> she nods solemnly like, mm, yeah. Not solemnly. No, hap- quite happily. smile. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Do you got any other like parents' lies that they told you? Oh, I'm sure I've got a bunch. I, I don't. Th- yeah, I don't think my parents told many lies. I used to crash my bike a lot when I was learning to ride on bike, uh-huh. and my dad would also always be like, "Oh my!" He was like, "This stick. is nothing like riding a bike. <laughs> You'll constantly be forgetting this." <laughs> but like, he'd be like, "Oh, when I let go, in back as he's like, oh, my, my he hand would. slipped. Yeah, yeah, and I'd crash, and he's yeah. like, my hand slipped, and I'm like, yeah, he wouldn't do that on purpose. So he's probably, but he was just letting go. Yeah, he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, big liar. <laughs> yeah, it's a big liar. What else? Okay, this is from. Uh, this this one I this is a very this is a very special one for me. Okay. This is from Landon. Just, just Do you have a special one for me after this one? Yeah, the next special one's after you, for you, I think. Good, okay. So Landon, uh, no last name. Okay. And then the subject line says, Two and a half men is my favorite show. What? And then the body of, and then the body of the email, there isn't anything. <laughs> So I guess Landon just wanted to let us know that Two and a Half Men is his favourite show. That's great, man. If I'm you love sh- that, it's cool. I'm not sure if we've mentioned Two and a Half Men recently. No, we did. But- we talked about endings. Oh, yeah, we did too, yeah. And I think we probably said, is this anybody's favourite show? And Landon went, this is my moment. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, uh, good for you, Landon. Anyway, that was your one. What's my one? Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. This is from Lincoln Chambers. Hey guys, long time fan here. I've been watching your videos and listening to the pod for about five years now. So have I. This is my first time writing in and I have not me. And I have a huge favor to ask of you guys. My girlfriend and I are celebrating our two-year anniversary on November 5th and would love a shout-out from y'all to celebrate. My girlfriend Shay means the world to me and I love her to the moon and back, so I feel like it's only fitting that we celebrate two years with a shout-out from my favorite pod. Whoa. She knows you guys as the butthole show and has never listened to an episode, but knows how this highly I think of you This is why we need to change the theme, Mason. We're not nope. hitting all the demographics. People think we're just a couple of butthole dudes, well, a couple of butthole surfers. I mean, they're not wrong. <laughs> I am also formally asking permission for Shay and Lincoln to be the official couple of the pod, aside from you two. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you for years of laughs and great content. Well, I wanted to say happy two-year anniversary to Shay and Lincoln. Uh, from us, the two the two butthole boys <laughs> from the butthole show. Correct. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a letter for you, James. Reboot. We're calling it the butthole show. We're going. We're starting at number zero, like wow. a butthole. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> what do you think? What happened to the other reboot? We we're just gonna do. <laughs> we're back. We're rebooting again. Okay, fine. Sorry to whoever was after whatever we called it mere minutes ago that we we rebooted out again. I got one from Hayden on Twitter. Rebutted. The what? Sorry. Rebutted. That's good. Yeah. Thank you. From hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, not from. That's what they you have to mm, you have yeah. to put in the thing. Lads, do you think we'll ever get a good video game movie? No, nope. uh, that's not. Yeah, no, I think we will. Okay. Uh, in light of the new hype surrounding Uncharted, or do you think the whole formula of bringing such characters and removing the actual you control the story element will work one day? So, like, uh, PS to twenty eighteen Tomb Raider AW, I guess as in win. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think there's ever a way to take that narrative and make it as like a universal? I think there definitely is. Yeah. Is there a way to put that element of choice back into a movie or the perception of like where, the, where you know, it's like there's a moment and the screen pauses uh-huh. and you have to shout and something. And Marky Mark turns to the, to turn to the mustache audience. Mustache or no mustache? mustache. I'm going to shave my mustache. And we're like, no, he's looking Mark, at, and It's don't like he's looking it. in the mirror. But he's like, I'm going to shave my mustache. In the bathroom, I'm going to shave my mustache. And we're all like, no, it's a pantomime. Yeah. And we're like, no, Mark. And he's like, okay, I would do it. I would do it. You know, because he's out of breath. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't think. So. I think. I think it's just the problem is that they're attempting to tell just an entire video game's length worth of story. Yeah, but video in, games over eight, over fifteen yeah, but hours, if over a game two hours, is like or fifteen hours. It's not usually fifteen hours of story. Like if you took well, all the cut true, scenes, yeah. it's like yeah, 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 a couple of hours. I guess. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Is Nathan Drake gonna kill like? I mean, we do people? know, and they should give us. Two hundred million dollars to make one. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, I'll make a banjo because I don't want movie, my name on it. I just want the money and have some influence. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah But I don't yeah. want to put my name on nice, it. Nice, nice, nice. You cool with that? Yeah, that's very cool. I, could, I yeah. might also do that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you reckon Nathan Drake though is going to kill four hundred people? Yeah. Ooh, no, Holmes, no, I don't know. Handgun, just like. <laughs> no, I think he might. I think he might like. There's going to be some cover shooting, right? I was going to say or some blind uh, fire. hundred percent blind firing over some crates or yeah. something, and we won't see. We, I reckon we won't necessarily see anybody take a bullet, but he's just... going to kill some. He'll have to. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you reckon there's going to be a section where, like, he's underwater and you think he's like an exotic locale, and he comes up and he's in the Brooklyn River or something? Yep. It's in four. Okay. Right. Where, like, oh, you yeah, think yeah. he's exploring exotic treasures? Yeah. Right. But right. he's in like. He works in a tugboat on a river in Jersey or some <laughs> yeah. shit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh He's getting a lobster out of a lobster tank in a in a restaurant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. 
Have you got any know. more letters, or is that no, all? That's all the letters, all this the letters week. Too, yeah. There are a bunch more letters, but I didn't. I didn't get to. All of course, of Mason. We get letters, and that's good. Thank you, everybody, for all the letters. I love yeah. the letters. Again, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I think I should give up on this because you know we get them, but we don't. I'm not getting the the, the letters amount that you're getting. Oh, you know I see, I mean? Ryan. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Should I just like stop this, or should I say just tweet us directly? Would it be easier? Or hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Should I keep hammering down on that? I don't know, James. Because otherwise I have to do it before the show and I tweet out, like, got any questions? Oh, yeah. And then we get, like, 200. And I'm like, I don't want that, though. I don't <laughs> want them all at once. You should say, are there any questions for the, the Weekly Planner pod, bearing in mind there's a you have to count them all yourselves and there's a 10-question cutoff? Oh, my goodness. And then by 10, people just have to stop. It's an honor system. That would be great. Right? People won't stop. No, They'll they be like, am I the 10th one? Actually, I'm breaking your rules. <laughs> yeah. And then what will you say to me? The one who did that. Block. Oh, that's right. fair. I, I just quietly mute people I, who annoy me. <laughs> that's what I do. How do you get all my messages then? <laughs> <laughs> I, I save them up. I read them all at the end of the week. Oh, yeah, I just get them all out at once. And then mute them again. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, nice. Oh, uh, that's the show. That is the whole show. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. We very much appreciate it. We How, do. People doing all right? People, what so, are you doing yeah. all right? Did, did people have a spooky, spooky ho- holiday weekend? Spooky? Spooky in a good way or spooky in a, spooky a spooky bad way? way. All right. Yeah. Hope not. Did anybody else forget to write off Mulan on their tax return? Oh, my God. I hope so. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you for listening and telling a friend and yes. subscribing and leaving a nice review. James, you got one there? Reviews help big time, Mason. That's right. People can do it in-app. It's as easy as uh, as Kendo Karate has said. Five stars. Said the world's imploding, but this is good. James and myself found the perfect edge of nihilism and hope to keep <laughs> pumping out Ripper content for seven years, question mark, I've been listening. Uh, you know how it feels when you feel like you're friends with people and you, you don't, don't know you exist? Uh, yeah, uh, this podcast is a lot like that. Keep up the banger work, guys. Thank you. Do something we like this, or you can do from Blake with a million E's. It says James and Mason, invite Scott the Woz on an episode, why don't you? I'd love to have Scott the Woz. If Scott the Woz was ever in the country and ever knows who we are, yeah. 100%. Let's see you about again. He does like retro gaming stuff. Oh. It's like in his early 20s. He's cool and hip and new and we need that kind of edge. We need to bring him in and then, so that then he'll rip promote him our limb brand. from limb and drink his blood. Exactly. Yeah, okay, and then right. we'll be Scott Well, that's the an open invitation, Scott the Was. If you are listening, yeah. we will rip you to pieces and drink your blood. Don't tell Scott the Was we're going to murder him though. Yeah. For everybody. No, Just, we're not going to murder him. Oh, so he's going to be alive? <laughs> no, no the, he will. I mean, I assume that that will we're just going to rip his limbs off and, okay. and drink the blood. I mean, I, I assume the lack of blood will kill him eventually. But. He'll Anakin Skywalker out of it. He'll be all yeah, right. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'll be That's fine. Right. Mm. Great stuff. Yeah. What else, Mason? Uh, if you'd like to get into contact with the show, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter at Bandcamp. You can go to Planet Broadcasting. Dot com to sign up to the newsletter from the great Rob Collins. That's right. Uh, and look at all the podcasts on the Planet Broadcasting Network. Oh, mum, 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 mum. Mum, your mum. Uh, how dare you? How That's dare what you, you said. You said mama. No, that's true. You can also uh, join the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. All kinds of cool mates having cool talks about cool topics. And being kind to each other. Be kind and nice and having a fun, nice time. You better be nice. Me? I will block you so hard, James. Oh, I'm pretty nice, aren't I? Mm, can you be, block me? You could I'm be nice. I'm an admin. How does that I don't work? know, maybe. What if we know. block each other? Let's what do it right happens? now. Let's have a race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Rob Collings. Raw Collings on Twitter. That's At right. the Weekly Planet on Twitter. Follow, follow both of those. Uh, I'm uh, Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, on an Instagram. I'm Nick Maso, N-I-C-K-M-A-S-E-A-U. James, you're Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Yes, that's right. If you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Chuck in a buck if you wouldn't mind. We'd absolutely bloody love it. Anything love it. you can turn, any, any coin you can spare. Any coins you can yes. spare. Yes, uh, yeah. or you can go to bigsandwich.co. Mm. Sign up to bigsandwich.co. That's where it's at. Get all really. the bonus content and podcasts. Consider it like a like a nine dollar Patreon tier that we control, so Patreon doesn't get a cut of it. Suck shit, Patreon. That's right. Uh, all sorts of stuff on there. Uh, movie commentaries and uh, and and bonus podcasts. We're having a good grand old time over bonus there. Bonus podcasts. It's, it's silly. That's right. It's silly over there. We're going to do gonna... a burn notice episode on there, aren't we? Are we? Yeah. What? Yeah. Gonna talk We're about just going to t- talk about what we sort of remember our burn notice. The, the TV series Burn Notice, where he's a spy, but the, the, is he? Well, he got burn notice. Yeah, he though. got burn notice. Yeah, but he's maybe still he's spy. friends with the guy from the Evil Dead, and 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 the, uh, one of the main the love interest character. She maybe was she was married. Irish for the first episode, and then she dropped the accent for the remainder of the series. Well, this this is all this will all be in our burn notice episode. Well, we, they will, people won't know because we'll cut this out, obviously, <laughs> oh, yeah, and then we'll yeah, save yeah, yeah. it for the, for the uh, for burn notice boys. <laughs> BN Boys. Can we just reboot this show as Burn Notice Boys episode one? Yeah, I think we probably can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Um, 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 
how about this? You've, we've also got an Amazon affiliate link in our yep. episode description. You can click on that if you want to buy some stuff on Amazon. It, it helps us out in some uh, sort of vague way. That's right. I get a check in the mail every month from Amazon and I'm like, oh, I have to cash this. Oh, why can't they just do digital transfers? Claire, please take care of this check. <laughs> But then she's out of the bloody house for half an hour, right? Yeah, you're not wrong, mate. Yes. Mm. Uh, also, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all their musical themes. We've got some T-shirts up on tpublic.com. That's right. Search for the Weekly Planet. We've got some, we've got some uh, official ones and bootleg ones, but why would you have one you want? We've got some great ones from uh, Christopher Whatever Small, who is the, the Weekly Planet posters guy. That's right. He's got some great teas up there. The great Robert's teas. Bat and Bat tea. Yes. Other teas. Other teas in, in addition to that tea. That's right. And that mm. is what I call Burn Notice Boys. That's right. Don't get burned, folks. That's a Out great. There. That's a great. Good, good, yeah. good, good. Do you mean like, like with fire? No, I mean by by like, like your the, workplace. by the government. Oh, like what the, about it? Wherever you work, so you work at a shoe store, you're not allowed to go back into the shoe store, and you're yeah, like, yeah. I just want to sell shoes. And they're like, no, but they're, they won't tell you why. Yeah, they're like, you what did burn, you do? You got a burn notice. Sorry, man. It's a conspiracy. It goes all the way to the top of a foot yeah. like a chain, mate. That's right. You sold you sold New Balance to Iran or whatever. <laughs> Is that what the <laughs> guy did in burn notice? I don't know. <laughs> We we'll talk about on the burn I notice. I never boys. got to the end of the, the burn notice. The end, of, like the season where they revealed why you got burned. So I don't know. I uh, I liked burn notice. It was, a good it was show. on. I'm like, this is all right. Yeah. I could watch this. But we didn't have as many options then. Right? No, that's yeah. right. He was the guy. He was in Hitch, and Hitch was like, "You're actually a prick, and I'm not going to help yeah, you." Yeah, that's right. Yeah, mm. Michael Weston was the character. Yeah, Michael Weston. All right. Yeah. Is that the? Uh, that's the show. Yeah, it is the whole show. Uh, thanks, folks, so much for listening. We'll uh, bloody see you next time. So see you bloody next time. Uh, grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Maybe some uh, special guests next week. Oh. We're still figuring that out. But who's it going to be, Mason? It's both your brothers. And they're gonna both fight of my brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Auntie Donna, hopefully. Nice. Some of them. Shall I leave this in, Collings? Because, you know, we might have, what, I'll say they're it. They're busy boys. I'll say it. And then, and then we'll see if it actually happens. We can guilt them into it. We can guilt them into it. Because exactly. we haven't asked them yet. Exactly. No, we have. We have. Goodbye. Oh, i got to put the end sting in. Nice. I'm such a fucking idiot. I should have this down pat by now. No, James, you're a cool dude. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. I should have been more convincing when I said that (laughs) lie then. (laughs) This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.